think we're live. We're probably live. We usually are when I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's see everybody chatting. Hi, everybody. Okay, let's pop this window out. There it goes. Let's make sure I've got audio. There's always a delay between what I say and when you hear it or when, live. there we go. Okay, so thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Joining us, hanging out with us. I don't know, I'm making it plural. We'll just include all of us in that and then it's correct for me to have pluralized that. Anyway, let's move on. So tonight, working in oils, I'm hopefully gonna be adding for the, a lot of the last details on the dolphin. I don't know if I'll finish them, to, well, I won't finish them in the live stream. I might finish them after, probably tomorrow. So I need to hurry up and get this guy finished. And that is what I'm working on tonight. Before we get started though, I just got, and I haven't had time to open it yet, so I thought I'd open it with you guys. You could see what type of things that I like to order. This is my dick lick order. So I ordered a bunch of arches because so many of you have recommended that, and I've been watching some videos that recommended it, so definitely excited to try that, and that's in the other room. So um, I'm not going to open that. You don't need to see me open a giant box of paper. But let's, yes, Joseph and fit there. Joseph Fincham, I can't talk. I am recording. I actually started recording about five minutes ago just to make sure I could sync up my two cameras. So I am. Thank you. Um, but let's go ahead and first I'm going to open up what's in this box. I only remember some of what I ordered and I know at least one tube of paint I want to use tonight. So that works out good. We'll just share with you guys. You guys like art supplies. I was running extremely late for some reason tonight. I don't even know why I was running so late. Okay, so, oh, geez, that is a bigger bottle than I thought it was. High gloss varnish from Liquitex. I have the gloss varnish, but not the high gloss. So I prefer very, very glossy. So yes, this is my first thing on there. This is the 32 fluid ounces. That is a big bottle of varnish. That should last me a little bit. I was gonna say forever. It won't last me forever. I actually go through it kind of quickly just because I produce so much art. So let's see. Oh, my free... Grumbar I actually got some Grumbacher, oh no, this one's not the free one. I got some Grumbacher oils because they had some colors that I really, really wanted. This one is the Phthalo Green Blue Shade. We'll be using him tonight, so I'm gonna stick him there. Okay, oh, this is a lot of packing. Wow, these are longer and thinner than I thought they were. I guess I didn't measure that out, but they sounded fun. I like long and thin pieces, and I don't know why I was thinking that would be a little bit bigger. This is the kind of fun, though. Hmm. Now that I'm looking at it, at first I'm like, I don't know if I would have ordered that if I really thought in my head what those sizes were. But now that I'm looking at it, that will be fun to do some work with the watercolor pencils on these. I got the cold and the hot press because I wanted to try them both. And then depending on what I like, I can order bigger sets. So well, that'll actually be kind of fun. I've got a few canvases from Fredericks that are the long skinny like that. I love working on that size. Well, maybe a little bigger than that, but the long and thin I like. So I got, oh, I love the watercolor pencil so much. I ordered a whole bunch of Derwent White. There's actually more in there. I went crazy on that order. But that pencil I loved. I'm like, I knew that was going to be the pencil. As soon as I used it, I knew that would be a pencil I'd go through like crazy. So I ordered some of those. Okay, let's see what else I've got. Some paint. I think that's it. For that. Okay, put that box out of the way. So I think these are my Liquitex. And one of them was on back order. Some colors I hadn't seen before, so we'll go ahead and see what I've got. A L resist. I can't say words. Like you would think as an artist, I would know how to pronounce all the fancy colors. I don't. It's kind of a burgundy red color. Um, what else is in here? More Liquitex. Oh my gosh, they pack seriously. Dick Blick. If you've not ordered from them before, they pack everything so well. And three tubes of unbleached titanium white, because we know I go through that like crazy. So we'll put those to the side. I don't need those today. Stay up there. And then these are the colors I'm excited about, because I can use them tonight. Again, with the Grumbacher, I actually was going to get my normal Windsor and Nudist. Windsor and Nudist. Wow. Windsor and N Newton. Um, my, I'm so tired today. Windsor and Newton. Um oil paint, but they didn't, they were out of stock on the, like the main color that I was going to order for. And so I like Grimbacher quite a bit anyway. So I went ahead and got a bunch of colors from them. So come out of the box. Oh, they like it in their house. Ooh, this is pretty. 
Oh, there, I'm making a mess of my art table right now. I got a phthalo blue, um, cobalt titanium blue. Pretty sure that's happening tonight. We'll just stick that one over there. Um, this one was actually, if you bought, that was the other thing with the Grumbrocker, why I decided to go with them, besides the Winsor Newton ha not having the color that I wanted. They came with, if you bought like three or, I don't know, they had some special where if you bought so many of them, you got a free tube of white. I like free paint. Okay, you go up there. I don't need you guys tonight. And then what color, other colors did I get? Come out. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Cobalt turquoise. We'll stick that over there. I'll probably mess with that. A purple color, cobalt violet, and green gold. That was I, actually one of the main colors. No, that was not one of the main colors. What was the other color? No, this was, okay, that's what it was. I'm rambling. Um, the phthalo green was the color that they did not have in Windsor and Newton. Well, that's a pretty color. I don't need it, so we'll put that to the side. I mean, I don't need it right now. So let's go ahead and set up the palette, and I'll answer some questions. Yeah, Curtis Brown says, I love Windsor and Newton. Newtis. I'm probably forever going to have that in my head now and keep calling it the wrong thing. Said it wrong once. Just going to keep doing. So let's see if I can answer some questions while I set up my palette here. Um, oh, Valerie got a box from Blick yesterday, too. Have I ever been to Puerto Rico? That's where I'm from. No, I've not. I've actually never left the U.S. I'm boring. Actually, I, I'm not one who really likes to travel. It's super exhausting for me. I'm going to blame the fibromyalgia on that. And, it, like, travel at all makes me so tired. Just even going and staying with my parents. I go there once a year. I am exhausted. And all I'm doing is sleeping for the most part there. Sleeping and eating. So I'm, ooh, that's going to be perfect for tonight. I'm excited about that color. Um, but, yeah, I don't... I've never really been one who travels. One of my friends loves traveling. She goes, actually two of my friends really, really like traveling. I never caught that bug myself. I think that it largely, ooh, another perfect color. Ah, I'm so excited. I don't have to mix these now. Okay, I'm gonna have to order, I think, a bunch of Grumbacher paints because I do like their oils and they just had some colors that were a little bit different than Winsor & Newton that I already have. Not that I would stop using my Winsor & Newton. I love those, but there were a few colors that were just a little bit different and the Grumbacher paints are like super, super um, like smooth. They're, they just, they're really nice to paint on. Whereas the Windsor and Newton, a lot of those can have a tendency to be a little bit like thicker and chunkier. Yeah, I've been on that with the, my mixing medium, so it doesn't really matter. But I think all this paint is starting to dry because I haven't, I didn't get a chance to paint much this week. As those of you who are following me on Instagram know, we got a new chicken this week a little baby parrotlet for my husband. So if you don't, I don't know if I ever mentioned this part. My, so chicken was never supposed to be my bird. Chicken was supposed to be for my husband. I don't have time to spend the amount of time I think a bird should get attention from its human. I don't have that much time or so I thought. So as much as I love birds, he was supposed to be for my husband to hang out with him when he's playing video games. And he does, he hangs out, he spends maybe an hour in the mornings with me. And then about, I'd say four to five hours with my husband in the afternoons or at night. I say afternoons, it's like at midnight when he gets home from work. Chicken's on our weird schedule. But I didn't, um, we thought being that the chicken was spending so much time with Matt that it wouldn't be a problem. Well, chicken ended up bonding to me. So yeah, that didn't work out. And then I got, let's see if I need anything out of here. I got, I started feeling really bad for chicken when I'm working during the day when he's by himself. So I went and I wanted to get like a little parakeet or some, some little bird that would stay in the same room, not the same cage, but the same room as him. No, don't need these. Um, and then I contacted Chicken's breeder. She happened to have a parrotlet. My husband fell in love. And so, yes, now we have two chickens, um, chicken and nugget. Nugget, though, I am not handling at all because I don't want a chance. Birds love me. I grew up with birds. I raised them, hand fed them, all of that. And I don't want a chance nugget bonding to me this time so it's funny every time nugget walks towards me my husband goes and scoops him up he's like get away from her because he's afraid he's gonna bond to me like chicken did but the good news is now chicken is officially my chicken so that's kind of fun all on its own i have my own chicken now although matt still play, plays plenty of time or spends lots of time with him too oh good more votes for windsor and nudist <laughs> um let's see 
that fine art guy said Puerto Rico is a part of the United States, not just just not a part of the mainland. Yeah, I've not been to Alaska. You're right. I actually worded that badly. Um, I've not been to Alaska. I've not been to Hawaii. I've never left like the continental US. The closest I came to being going to an island was Catalina Island in California. Um, let's see. How's the weather? Where it's nice. My window's open. It is so nice. If it's snowing, yep, you said it's snowing where you are. I'm sorry. Um, that's, snow is just, I, I can't handle cold. I'm such a wimp. Um, no, it's really, really, really nice here. Where's the phthalo purple? No, not phthalo purple. Purple dioxazine. The weather is beautiful right now. Everything's turning green, which this is my favorite time of year. Although it's also allergy season for me. I don't do well with oaks and they're all coming into their foliage time or they're growing all their leaves and stuff. So my allergies should get pretty bad soon here. Um, do we need anything else? That should be good for now. So I think I'm going to start with these turquoise colors on the water. Yeah, we have um, JPC 13 art to, to thank for the nugget name. I was going to name him Peep, like the little chicken candies. Um, plus he's super little. I don't know if you guys are familiar with parrotlets, but they're like hummingbird size. So tiny, so adorable. And he, um, JPC 13 art, when I had mentioned that, I asked you guys over on Instagram if you could guess the name, because I thought that might be one people would guess. And, um, yeah, he's, he guessed nugget and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? So we changed it. Now it's, we have chicken and nugget. Okay. Let's see. Make sure you can see the blue here. Have you over a bit. And that brush. My brushes, I should have cleaned. I haven't painted much because that's where I was going with that story. Uh, because we were taking care of getting the, the new bird situated and picked up and all the supplies he needed. And then I went and took reference photos on for Patreon on Monday. It's just been a hectic last couple of days. So I am just so far behind on work and I didn't get painting done. So my brushes have been sitting here. I clean them in the brush cleaner, but if, you, if you're not familiar with this, with oil painting, if you just use, like I use Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner, if that's all you use to clean your paint brushes after you paint, they will start to stiffen up. Let me see if I've got any that are worse. Um, they're not, mine aren't terrible right now, but they're getting there. They're, um, like this is starting to kind of not, it only bends halfway. It's still usable, but what I should have done when I realized I wasn't gonna paint for a day or two is wash them with my master's brush cleaner and water, like it's soapy water, or you can use pink soap. There's lots of different brush cleaners, but I always do my brushes in two parts. First, with a paint thinner, let the paint thinner kind of dry out or soak it up on the paper towel and then wash them separately with that soap and it'll make your brushes last a lot longer. But just rinsing in paint thinner, especially with liquid, liquid, oh, I need to put that out. Liquid being a fast drying medium, it it just dr will dry out those brushes super super fast so I will soak those with a bit of um, come on, out, 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 out. a little bit more there we go um, I'll soak them and they'll it'll refresh them quite a bit but your brushes will last a lot longer if you do that in the two part use that second like a brush ideally a soap slash conditioner and that's what the masters is or yeah I think it's the masters is what that one is it's all my supply list over on my website Okay, now I'll paint. Oh, I put down the brushes I wanted to use. Seriously, I don't know how I'm getting through tonight. My brain is so not here. Way worse than normal. These look like they'll work out. Now, one brush that I usually, or type of brush that I'm usually not too careful about making sure I clean all the way are these little round ones. Um, super cheap little brushes there there's no even name brand on them but they're very stiff anyway not these i like a little bit better i like to have a variety some that are in good condition and are fairly soft but more often than not i want them to be a little bit more stiff so i intentionally don't clean these well and i talk about that with acrylics too um this one and my my rake brush i do the same thing with acrylics i'll intentionally not clean those brushes well because i like them when they stiffen up just a bit especially if i've been using oils Okay, whoops, scroll too far. Ben asked if I have, and I apologize, I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce everyone's names tonight. It's just one of those days for me. So I apologize ahead of time. Um, ben asks if I have any tips for tackling a large painting. I'm starting a 30 by 40 inch and the size is very intimidating. It is. 
work well the medium you're working in i think will depend on that if it's acrylics it just dries so fast that can definitely be a little bit um well a lot intimidating with that size work in layers and with acrylics i like to get the entire canvas painted with some color first so instead of just let's say i'm doing an underwater scene i'm not going to paint the doll or even this with acrylics i wouldn't paint the dolphin you saw what i did with the underpainting i'm just going to do one solid color and kind of paint around in sections and then blend and worry about that as i get into future se sections but i don't worry too much about the first layers being perfectly blended because i'm going to fix that later on um trying to think back up here another tip back away from it a lot a lot a lot if you spend too much time too close to a canvas that big and that's a problem i had that was the size of the octopus that i recently painted if you spend too much time too close to it it you start to lose sight of what you're doing it's like it's so big everything is so close to your face it's already so big very easy to lose track of your perspective lose track of things that need to be shaded or not shaded or you know highlighted you it's really hard to see so continuously take breaks and back away from it that was a big one I had to keep reminding myself on the one that I recently did. And it can help too if you are in, like this room isn't really big. So when I step away from it, I want to, I don't remember what size it is. It's like 12 feet by like 13 feet or 10 feet. I don't know, something like that. So it's not huge considering how much stuff I have in here. So one of the things that I do is take a photo of the work and look at it on a small screen. Sometimes that's better because you can't back up enough in the, this size room. So that sometimes makes it easier for me to kind of see where I'm going with things. Tommy wants to know what I use to dry, to blend acrylics. They dry fast. I paint fast. I use a smooth canvas. That helps. Um, so like Frederick's Blue Label or their Belgian Linen are two of my favorites. And I paint fast. If it's not fast enough, then I use my airbrush to mist water. And you don't have to have an expensive airbrush. You can just get a cheap hobby kit and mist water to keep the canvas wet. You can keep it wet for hours if you wanted to. But that works out really, really well for me. Oh, I'm loving this color. I'm loving the fact that I don't have to blend it. Like, I, I know how to blend it. You can, or not blend it, mix it. I always mix colors, and I think it's important in learning how to mix colors. You know, start with a more limited palette. But now that it's like I'm pretty competent in color matching and color mixing, this is just easier to get the color I need and not have to mix. It's that lazy factor kicking in. Um, let's see. Oops, scrolled too far. I knew that was coming. Let's see, have I, um, that fine art guy wants to know if I've ever had problems with humidity. No, I mean, if you mean with the art, no, it's not. Actually, I almost like the humidity better, especially with acrylics, because it'll make the paint dr stay wet longer. So it, you get a little bit more time to blend, so the humidity actually works really well, or works to your advantage, I think. Plus, I just like humidity anyway. I know I'm weird. I went to Florida once for an art assignment thing. I had to, I had to go... Um, painted a convention there and it was super humid and I loved it. I, I know I'm weird, but as far as the paint, key, it, the acrylics don't dry as fast. So I kind of liked that. But as far as other mediums, I really don't notice much of a difference. Now you do want to watch if it's super humid. Like I wouldn't want to varnish a painting if it's very humid, especially a spray um, that can cause some problems. So that would be inconvenient there. I just time around the super humid days. I mean, it's the same thing with any type of weather. Like you wouldn't want to use a spray varnish because I do it outside or I always use the spray varnishes outside if I'm using one of those. You wouldn't want to use that when it was a colder day, like if it was super cold outside. And I, even in the garage sometimes would be too cold. So when, well, where I previously lived. So you just kind of have to work around that depending on what it is you're doing. For, but for the actual painting, I've not had any problems. So what I'm doing now, I just want to make this blue like a little bit more bold than what it's been. Aloria Fine Art, Aloria, I know I'm saying everything wrong tonight. What do, you, um, what do you think your dolphin is thinking? He looks pensive. When are you finishing me? That is what is going through his head. Are you ever going to finish me? Um, let's see, Gail says tornadoes in the south. Yeah, we do get tornadoes down here, so that's definitely a negative. This area is not too bad where I'm at, but there are like further north and further east um, 
they definitely get some. And we can get them here. It's just not as common as some other areas. What do I think about wearing gloves when oil painting? I know of a lot of artists who do. I don't like it. I'm just pretty clean. Although I say I'm clean, but I did get some paint on my hand under my nail earlier. Luckily, it wasn't one that has a letter or anything in it. It was one of my blues. But um, I just typically keep my hands very clean. Um, I'm not one, I'm not a super messy artist. If you're somebody who ends up with paint all over you, then gloves are probably a good idea because some of them are some different or some different. Wow. Grammar is just not going to be a thing for me tonight or a proper grammar anyway. Um, some types of paint do have different tox, toxic issues or yeah, be aware of that. So if you're a messy painter, then gloves aren't a bad idea at all. I just don't like wearing gloves. Like even when it's freezing outside, I avoid them. I buy them, like the little cheapy ones, thinking I'm going to, not for painting, but to go outside thinking I'm going to wear I never wear them. I lose them far before I ever get a chance to wear them. Oops, scroll too far. Um, Dufo says, I saw someone using a water-based lubricant for prolonged acrylics. And I've known of people who did that. There are mediums that will, I'm sure, I, I think Liquitex makes them, or I think everyone probably makes them, to let them stay wet longer. I don't like them, and I don't personally, the artists who paint in acrylic who are painting in a style and a look that I want my work to look like, I don't know a single one who uses those. They all either paint fast or use an airbrush. That, that's it for, um, because I looked into that originally and I tried it, uh, I had students that had brought some in, I believe. I don't like them. They make the, the paint feel like gunky. I don't really like a lot of mixing mediums anyway with acrylics. It just, I don't like how it feels. More often than not, I go, unless I'm just glazing, then I'll go with, with a glazing medium. But for the most part, if I'm just blending and mixing and painting wet into wet, I will almost always just use water. I prefer the, the way that the paint feels there for the type of paint that I use. Now, if I was using a different type of acrylics, maybe that would be different. But for my Liquitex Basics, I, for the Basics, the heavy body and the soft body, I've, I just really like water. Actually, that's not totally true. For the soft or the heavy body, I do usually like to thin that a little bit more with the glazing medium. That stuff dries. I don't, the, the heavy body dries so fast anyway. So that's another thing. Um, if you are using Liquitex heavy body or another heavy body paint, I know that they have a tendency to dry really fast. Like even on the palette, they just dry so fast. So that may be the problem. If you switch to a soft body or to the Liquitex basics, they may stay wet a little bit longer, but it's not something, I mean, you will get to the point where when you're first painting, it's going to feel like they're drying super fast and it's hard to control. The more you paint, you just kind of adjust for it and you get used to it. And it won't always feel like that as long as you just keep practicing. But I don't personally, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt the paint to use something that keeps them wet longer. But it it just changes the consistency to one that I don't like. But as far as archival reasons, there's no reason not to. It's just a matter of the end result I don't like. And I'll have somebody link me. Well, look at this video or look at this person uses them and they're beautiful. I'm not saying it can't be beautiful. I'm just saying it's not my preference. Let's see. Valerie wants to know if I looked at the Aztec airbrush. Yes, I have it on my wish list. I haven't ordered it, but I did look briefly at it. Thank you. Jose said, what is your spirit animal? Coffee. Um, that fine art guy. Whoa, scroll too far. That fine art guy said, Thanks God. thank God there is someone else who likes cool, humid days. Valerie said she lived through two tornadoes as a kid. Um, in Garland. Yeah, that's over like to the east of us. You were in school for one. Oh my gosh. We had a scare. I was teaching at that place where you um, drink wine. I was teach. Yeah, I, the students drink wine. I did not. I drank iced tea with lots of honey because you care. Uh, they would drink wine while painting. When I was teaching there, it was a little bit stormy. We knew how bad weather was coming, but not to this extent. My husband, I don't drive. So he had dropped me off. He went home. Storms came. The tornado sirens were going off while I was teaching class. We moved to the class to the back where there weren't windows, but we still weren't super protected because um, there, there was the big, huge, huge window, like huge windows. So we moved behind a curtain. I don't know how much that curtain would have protected us, but we moved back then, but no one could drive. It wasn't like we had the radio going while we were listening. No one could drive. So they had me painting to keep everyone calm. And I'm like, well, who's going to keep me calm? I'm from California. We don't have tornadoes there. So I had to paint through. That was a scary night. And then my husband finally, it got 
safe enough that he was able to come pick me up once we were, uh, everyone finished. Well, some people left. There were a few students who stayed and we, we finished the project. And then once the weather let up enough, my husband came to pick me up and he actually I got to talk that night um Buster I don't know if you know Dave and Buster's the people who originally knew them or opened that Buster was one of them that guy his wife is the one who owned the Let's Art Party I worked at she owned two locations and she or he both of them they were just such nice people but Buster was so sweet he called and was making sure I was okay and he's like you don't have to stay there you can go home you know make everyone go and it's like it's not safe to leave but nice guy in case anyone ever wondered from the Dave and Buster thing he doesn't own that anymore but anyway um back then he was very nice Moving on. So that on the way home, I never really understood how people got caught in flash floods. You'd hear people in car, you know, get stuck in their car and all that. And I'm thinking, how do you get stuck in that? Like, that doesn't make sense. Obviously, you drove into an area you shouldn't drive into. Are you dumb? No, I didn't realize what it was like. On the way home, we were almost home and maybe not even four miles away. I mean, close, close. It started pouring so fast. We just had to stop in the middle of the street because you couldn't see anything. That was scary. And we needed to turn into, like we were right in front of where we needed to turn to go onto our street. You couldn't turn because you wouldn't know if another car was coming. That, it, the water rose so fast and out of, no, I mean, it was, that was crazy. So yeah, now I understand how people get caught in flash floods. Well, we were fine, but it was, that was very scary. Not something I'd ever experienced in California. Uh, Max asked, how long do I have, you have to wait to varnish an oil painting and acrylic painting? Acrylic, I usually wait overnight. It will, okay, my acrylics sit out longer. I don't varnish anything typically until it sells because, or if it's going to be displayed, like I've got the stuff coming up, I've got to drop off for the Frisco City Hall thing. I had to varnish those because they're going to be displayed. But I don't like to varnish things until they're sold or on display because I can't, once they're varnished, it's really hard to get a good, good photo of them. And if something happened and I needed another photo, I prefer just to not have it varnished yet. So mine usually will wait months to years before I varnish. But if I'm in a rush, if I need to get stuff done with an acrylic painting, I like to let it dry overnight just to make sure everything is really dry. And with an oil painting, it needs to be dry to the touch for the varnish that I use. The varnish that I use is called Gamvar. No. Gamvar by Gamsol. Gamsol. Gamvar by, I can't remember. It's in my, excuse me, my supply list on my website. But it's, um, that one, it, the oil paint only needs to be dry to the touch in order to use it. And you can use that right away. Other varnishes require a painting to be 100% dry for six months before you can use them. So that can be a problem if you're doing a commission for somebody. So Gamvar is definitely my choice there. And it's worked really well for me. I love the results I get. Bella <laughs> says, I guess you have to pin your gloves to your coat now. I still wouldn't put them on. I'd just walk around with the gloves stuck to my shoulder. That would actually be really funny. Whoops. Uh, scroll. There we go. Tell me what's new. Will you do one on deep cleaning brushes? If you mean a video, I've already done one showing how I clean my brushes. Um, so you can look that up, like Lockery and how to clean brushes or something like that. It should pop up. Um, have I ever tried polarizing filters when photographing, pho photo photographing, pho photo God, my brain is not here. My work, they can be eliminated, they can, I should just give up. They can eliminate virtually all of the glare if they're set up the right way. You know what? I do have those and I use them to take photos at like an aquarium to help with the glare on the glass. I've not used them enough to know what in the world I'm doing. I need to research that because I got some that my friend who is a photographer recommended and I just haven't learned how to use them. So no, I've not tried them for getting photos of the artwork. That's a good suggestion though. I hadn't even thought of using them for that. Um, let's see. Leslie said, have you used Neocolor by Karen Dosh? Not yet. I don't own any of those yet. Someday I probably will pick those up because I want to do a comparison of a lot of the different pencils. JPC13 Art, who is the one who named Nugget, wants to know how Nugget and Chicken are getting along so far. So far, I'm not putting them together. I mean, they're in the same room. They're right next to each other, but I want them to get to know each other through the safety of cage bars well before they're really in contact. Now, the other night, Nugget decided, and keep in mind, Nugget's like this big and Chicken's, you know, cockatiel size. Nugget decided he was interested. I was sitting on the floor with Chicken and Nugget jumps off my husband's leg and comes up. He wants to meet Chicken and he was lunging for him so much, but not aggressive aggressively just like he was reaching for him he kept toppling over his whole face like a little penguin it was kind of adorable 
Um, but chicken ran away. Chicken had no interest whatsoever. And we're sitting there hovering right there because I actually don't want them. I'm not chancing a, a chicken fight. So he chicken really wasn't interested until later that night. Nugget came up. He found my coffee cup was sitting next to me on the floor and it was warm. It wasn't hot anymore, but still warm. And he was kind of playing around the cup and then snuggled up against it to go to sleep. Well, chicken, and I did not realize this, chicken thinks that coffee cup is his territory. Kind of makes sense. I drink, I just keep washing the same cup and drinking out of it like twice a day. So chicken is used to seeing this cup all the time and he always walks around it. Apparently he thinks it's his. So chicken, that was the first time chicken showed any interest in like going up to Nugget, but he wanted Nugget away from the cup. Like what a random, birds are funny. So um, we had to like move chicken away, but I haven't like really let them get face to face and, and get to know each other yet. I want them to safely get to know who each other is and get used to each other through the bars. But it's cute because chicken seems to really like having another bird in the room to talk to. They'll talk back and forth or chirp back and forth. It's really, really cute. And chicken's not as upset when we leave the room as he was before. He normally, if I leave the room, he loses it. He still does a bit, just not as bad as it was. So I think my plan of him having company in the room is working. Um, Shalon, so I'm not saying that we're out. Shalon, Lon, really nice lady, says <laughs> regarding the polarizers, I can write a summary for it and post it in the art group on Facebook if anyone is interested. I would love that. Please do. Um, let's see. Er, Nana said, how long do you have to wait in between layers of an oil painting? It depends on what type of oil paint you're using and what type of mixing medium. In my case, I'm using, you know, regular oils but I'm using a fast drying medium, the liquid. And so I only need to wait a day, you know, overnight, I'm ready to usually, it's it's tacky enough. It's still wet, but tacky enough, I can go into my next layers. So it just depends. If you're using like linseed oil, it could be wet for months. It just, it depends on, on which products you're using. I don't have that kind of patience. I really like liquid. I like it drying overnight. I mean, it stays wet long enough that I can blend wet into wet, but let it dry so I can go onto my next layer sooner. I am in love with this color, by the way. If anyone wants to know what that was, I want to list that, let you guys know again, because that was, this color, if you like teal, this is the nicest I've used that's pre-mixed. I've got the lighter one, which is the cobalt turquoise, just cobalt turquoise, and the darker one is cobalt titanium blue. But those are both by Grumbacher, and oh my gosh, I am so excited to have these. They're... I have a very similar, you know, turquoise, but I have to mix a little bit of white with it, and it's, it's just not as good. I like this one. Mar Mara Black asks if I'm saving room for Nuggets Cousin t Tidbit. There will be no more, no more pets for a while. <laughs> um, have I ever seen a ghost? Random question. That is a random question. Um, have I seen a ghost? No, I've had weird things happen, but I've never seen a thing. Um, Creative Gen DIY said, do you like reading books, art books? You, depends on the art book. Um, and I don't have time to like sit and read that much. So I like audiobooks, and there aren't a lot of, there are some art audio books I need to order. I've got them on my wish list and I keep forgetting, um, to do that there. I know they're in my audible wish list though. So that would be my main way there. The art books that I have that I like, I really like the Aliona Nicholson, her colored pencil painting Bible and her portrait painting book. Those are really, really good. I enjoyed those. I like that kind of art book where I'm learning something practical that I can then apply to my own work. But um, it, it's, I find it's hard to find a good book with good information that I found useful for myself or like whatever stage I was at. So yes and no i mean I, I like the good ones i just have a hard time finding ones that i really like um let's see vladimir said what do you think of students people artists who freestyle i think if you like it go for it uh, the thing art is any anything that you like i mean you can do is well, if it's make sure it's archival if it's something you're selling but i don't have any like negative judgment for somebody doing a style that i don't do i i have definitely have respect for all of that I think it's all helpful because when you have different styles, let's say Picasso, let's say you don't like Picasso. Yeah, but it formed something else. Some, an artist can see that and take it and kind of morph it into another style. Like you, you, everything has to do with everything else. There's this whole trail where it leads to other styles that people like more, like less, whatever, but they're all, they kind of connect and influence, influence each other. So I think it's all good. 
I like that there's a lot of different different styles that people do. April Rains Fine Art said, what are the benefits of using linseed oil? It dries slower. Some people like that. Has a tendency to yellow. I don't like that. Um, the end. But, but I mean, there, there's not much, there's probably a lot more, but that's a, my short version of it. It just dries really slow. So it feels nice to paint on, but no nicer than li liquid. Um, Neil Patel Art said, I am working on, oops, going to the underwater color pencil piece and I am not getting sharp edge getting sharp edge on a yellow tang fish. The edges of the fish blends into the surrounding coral. Any suggestion? Underwater color pencil piece. Pull the blue. Okay, you're not gonna get the yellow of a colored pencil is not going to, I'm trying to think how to put this. Okay, let's say the dolphin is yellow in the background is the green. I'm not gonna be able to take that yellow and sharpen it with the yellow. I'm gonna sharpen it with the blue next to it. I'm gonna have a very sharp pencil and I'm gonna pull that blue up to the yellow versus the yellow into the blue. You go the yellow, yellow into the blue, it's too translucent. Sharpen that with the dark color that it's next to, whether that be coral or fish. I mean, I haven't seen it, so this may not totally fit, but what you're probably running into is trying to draw the fish so that it goes up against here and sharpening it with the yellow pencil, thinking I'm sharpening up the yellow pit fish. Sharpen the opposite edge. Darken the water behind it, something like that, but use the blue to, to make that crisp edge instead of the yellow. The yellow is going to be too translucent, so that's not going to work so well. Um, Tammy said, I noticed the first nail layers of an oil painting aren't blended well. It adds texture, which is nice, but I've also noticed it's easy to overblend and the layers disappear. Yep, that is true. Christy asked how I clean my acrylic paintings before varnishing them. Take a really soft cloth or like, um, usually a soft cloth, like an old t-shirt ideally, and I wipe it down really well. That's, they never get, mine don't get dirty. They're not stored in a place where they're really getting dirty. If they're hung on the wall, they're getting varnished. But in here, they're in those cases that you see behind, well, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can kind of see some of them. Those teal case things back there, they're, um, that keeps the dust and everything off of them. So I just wipe them down. Art by Stacy said, can you approximate how long is left till completion of this painting, please. Probably tomorrow. Susan wants to know what the colors are in the dark water. Normally I'm like, oh, colors don't matter. And I do that whole thing. You know what, this time I'm actually gonna need to tell you because it's kind of cool the way these work. So I've got several olive greens. I've got my turquoise color. And then the color that is giving you this, this depth in the, that, that is this reddish brown or burnt sienna. It gives you that mixed in with the greens and the blue gives this depth that's so perfect on green water. So that's an important one. Um, that fine art guy said, do you have any materials that seem absurd and insane but are super useful? Q-tips for oil painting. <laughs> um, that's a big one for, for me. Um, hmm. Trying to think, looking around my, pal my studio in here to see if anything was super useful. A lot of mine would be storage boxes in containers, like stuff I've got these, you can get these at like, these are from Hobby Lobby, you could go like the dollar store. Store your art supplies in little containers. Not only will it make your, your space seem nicer, like I keep mine inside of a big dresser I got from Ikea. So that would be something that seems kind of weird. If you, I have the 360 video or studio tour, you can see that. But if you have a, um, a, dresser like this one I got from Ikea. It was around $100 right around there. Big, heavy, big drawers. And I was just throwing everything in there. The problem is all my oils, everything. It was just this mix. Every time I opened the drawer, it took so long to find anything I needed. So the dresser was cool on its own. But then when I added these little storage boxes, or I used to use shoe boxes, that worked too, but those start to kind of lose their shape a bit. But store little containers, little shoe, and that would work. Shoe boxes, or let's say you get like you know how sometimes people will give you a Christmas gift and it comes in that little box, that little gift card box? Save those things, or little little like cardboard jewelry type boxes. Save those little ones and then put them inside a bigger shoe box. And you can store some of your little bits, like little airbrushing bits I have and stuff like that. Or I don't know, just the way that you can organize and store stuff, I think that that can make things so much easier for you. You wouldn't think about it, but when you can easily find what you're looking for, it's pretty helpful. I think I just hit my camera. Did I move that over on you guys? No, you can still see. But I think that would be, yeah, storage is a big one for me. Um, oh, 
here's a good one a you know those 3m velcro strips that you can like hang stuff on your wall those the velcro i have one i think you can see it here this is actually under i've got tape over because it it, the white was showing on the video but that there if you are working on a round canvas take that velcro strip put one piece on the back of your canvas and one there and stick it and that way if it's a round canvas that keeps trying to roll away it stays in place but it's not like permanent tape or anything it works so well that was a big one i absolutely love like it just oh it makes everything so much easier because rolling away canvases is really annoying, but I like round canvases. So that was my solution for that, and that has worked so nicely. Um, let's see. And I, none of these are art supplies, but I use them for art. So I guess I'm not totally answering your question accurately. I can't think of art supplies that were really random that worked well. No, not, uh, not off the top of my head. We'll see if anything comes up later. Nana said, can you start the next layer of oil painting when it is dry to the touch or does it have to be completely dry? When it's dry to the touch, that's fine. Now, there, will, there would be some exceptions. I mean, let's say as long as you're working um, fat over lean, meaning your thickest layers go last, then you're okay. Now, if you did the opposite and something was thicker, you don't want to put a thin layer on top of that. You can run into issues there. But um, especially if you didn't, because it wouldn't be dry all the way. It has to cure. And so that, but that all just comes down to the fat over lean rule, which if you're not familiar with, it just means your thinnest layers. Let's say you thin your paint down with paint thinner. I personally don't do that and almost, it's rare that I do. I thin mine with my mixing medium. But let's say you thin it down, your first layer is really, really thin. Then you want each additional layer, you can go a little thicker, a little thicker, meaning less liquid, less paint thinner. In my case, I don't use paint thinner, it's not an issue. All my layers are, are equal, so it doesn't, that works too. But you wouldn't want to like take a palette knife and paint all over and then have it start to dry just a, a bit and then glaze a thin layer on top of that because that thin layer is going to dry faster than the layer underneath it and that causes cracking and, and problems there. But as long as you're staying fat over lean, it, it doesn't, um, you'll be fine. Valerie asked if I got my a Blick catalog in the ink temps box. You know what? I think I did. Let's see. I have one I saved that had, let's see. Oh, it's a little one. Let's see if it's in here. My ink temps tins might be in this one. Let's see. Prisma. I'm not sure on this. This is a really little one. This is exciting for you. Watch me flip through a catalog. Don't worry, it's not too big. Watercolor brushes. Oh, here we're getting to pastels. Makes me just cringe thinking about touching them. Oh, it's there, look. Hold on, I don't want it to touch there. You guys can see if it'll focus on it. My dolphin, yay. That's just so exciting to me. I love that. I. So excited to be a part of it. I, I'm excited for two reasons because one being on the cover of an art supply like that has got that's like dream come true right there but then it's a, an art supply that I love so like I love ink tents so that's just such a cool thing that I got to do um what was I doing I dropped the brush that I had in my hand huh I guess these would work Thanks for pointing that out, Valerie. No, I have to keep that too. I'm going to end up with a stack. I'm going to be like those people that have like stacks and stacks of newspapers in their house for some reason they can't get rid of. It's going to be me and Dick Blick catalogs with my ink tents in it. Um, actually, maybe I'll just save some. I'll send some to my mom. She'll be excited. Jose said, can you give some tips using Prismacolor pencils for portraits? Um, I really like blending with odorless mineral spirits, especially with Prisma. It, it, keep a light hand as usual. If you push too hard, those are waxy anyway. You don't want to get too much wax build up too soon. But keep, a, yeah, keep a light hand and keep the pencils sharp, but not sharp like the long point. I like to keep them to where it's a more, I call it the golf pencil point where it's kind of more, um, a wider point this way, not super long that way. And that would be my tip for you there. Don't use yellow in blonde hair. Everyone thinks if somebody has blonde hair to use yellow, you, that's really not going to be your best bet. Probably want to avoid that. That gives you, I mean, blonde hair isn't yellow. Blonde hair would be a combination of purples, um, grays. You get some tans in there, even some reds, but not yellow. Uh, the only time I would use yellow is if I was mixing it with purple in order to create 
the more natural tone I was going for, but even with Prismacolors or any color pencils in general, wouldn't be a color I would use. So that would be my big tip there, but keep a light hand. Don't, if you start pushing too hard too soon, you limit how many layers you can do. Now that can be a technique that works. I mean, I know of artists who do burnish the whole thing and get beautiful results, but when you're just getting started, I don't recommend it. It's too hard to control. You have to really know where you're going to know when you can push that hard without damaging things. Um, Emily asked if I've gone, I went to art school. No, I did not. Oh, I knew you were going to scroll. I like watching it. It's going to scroll. So I pause and it just scrolls anyway without me moving. Max said, artist gloss varnish by Windsor and Newton. Are those good too? Gambar is not selling in my country. Um, the va varnish for oils with Windsor and Newton, they are... You have to let those dry for six months, I believe. Your painting has to be 100% dry, not like I finished it, now I wait six months. No, it needs to dry and then you wait six months in order for most of those. I don't know if they have any that you can use sooner. You'd have to contact the company or read the, just make sure you read the instructions or the directions on the back. So, I mean, Windsor and Newton products are fine. I just don't know what the dry time is when you can apply those. Tomorrow says, huge kudos, wonderful, how oh, wonderful, I've seen your work in stores. That's so cool, and I've not yet seen mine in stores. Like Hobby Lobby is the one near me that I've gone to, and the Michaels, they didn't have my my tin. They probably, the first time I see that in a store, the people are going to think I'm insane because I'm going to be standing there posing with the art. No, it's mine, really, and they're not going to believe me. They're going to be like, sure, sure it is. You are just a crazy lady. What palette do I use? Andrew asked. This one, it should be listed in the video description. If not, it's over on my website under supplies. This one is a new wave glass palette with a gray bottom inside of a master's, master sun. I have to look at the lid of it, which is like basically a big piece of Tupperware. You've got this lid that goes on top of it and it seals out the air so the paint stays wet a lot longer. Plus it makes it really easy for stores. So if you've got animals, like I used to have a cat years and years ago when I first started oil painting and I didn't want her walking through the palette. So, cause she kept trying to do that. So this was nice because it, it locked her out so she couldn't get into it. So nice for pets or if you have kids, somebody, cause the lid's kind of hard to get off. It's nice. Aloria asked, how many subscribers did you have before you started doing live streams? When do you think it's worth it to go live? You know, I, don't know that you need to wait till any specific time because you're basically with a live stream, like I know I've talked about Patreon, wait until you've got a fair amount of subscribers, otherwise it's too much work. But with a live stream, especially if you're doing it on YouTube, that stays as a video on your channel. So it's basically a video, you don't have to edit. This is great, I just have got a two hour video done show, talking to you guys, answering questions, getting the painting, plus hanging out's fun anyway, where I don't have to edit this. That's amazing. It kind of sucks when I say something super stupid and I'm like, I need to remove that. I sound like a jerk, even though I thought I was hilarious. Um, I'll later on watch it. I'm like, oh, or see something that I saw. And I'm like, I can't edit that. That kind of, you can edit parts. Um, but anyway, it's, I would say start now. If you've got anybody who, even if they don't watch, people can watch the replays and that can be enough to bring people in. So I don't think that you need to wait. I'm not sure how many I had. I started about two years ago. So I probably, I know I had over a hundred thousand. I don't, but I don't think it was necessary. I don't think you have to hit a certain amount to start live streams because it's just a video that's already edited for your channel. That's perfect. But that is a good question. Oh good, Valerie knew the answer to that. She said I was under 125K when I started live streams. But again, I really don't think that it matters. Gail asked if people recognize me in public at Hobby Lobby. One time a couple of years ago, there was a guy who we follow each other on Instagram now, a real cool guy. He saw me and he messaged me later on, was, or commented on Instagram. He goes, I think I saw you, was that you? And it, it was, but he didn't want to feel stupid if it wasn't and go up to a stranger. So that was the only time. It would be weird. I don't know. I think that would be weird if somebody recognized me. I wouldn't know how to respond. So I'm just building this turquoise. I'm actually going to go ahead and switch brushes and start building some of the highlighted ones too. I'm holding these two brushes for the sake of having something in my hand. I have no intention of using those right now. That was pointless. Um, you will work. Emily wants to know my favorite medium, usually whatever I'm currently working in. Like I always say, if I had to only choose one, you could never use another medium again. Um, well, I would be very sad, but it would probably be acrylics just because I can do so, so much with, I mean, 
I can get just about any look I want with them. I include my airbrush in that though. Um, I wouldn't want to. I get. I would get bored. I love working in lots of different mediums. I mean, I normally even, whatever medium I'm currently working in is usually like my, fa I will tell you, that's my favorite. Like right now I'm working in oil, so oils is my favorite right now. But um, as soon as I'm done, I won't want to do another oil for a while. I'm going to want to switch to something else. The first time that I really wanted to use the same medium twice in a row was the watercolor pencils. But part of that's because it's new, but oh, those were fun. I really wanted to do oil, the watercolor pencils two times in a row. Um, whoops, scroll too far. I ordered Inktense Blocks and was thrilled to see it was in your tin. That's awesome. My husband thought I had lost my mind because I danced a little. <laughs> You're kind of my hero. That's so cool to hear. Post photo. If you guys have photos with those tins or you're just in the store shopping, post photos. I would love to see them online. Tag me in them or post them over on my Facebook. Whatever. I would love to see them. I get so excited when I see you guys with those. Okay. Let's see. Toby said, have you ever used water-soluble crayons pastels? Any tips? If so, not enough to give you tips. Like, I think there might have been something with smart art box with one of those i don't remember but i would i'm not competent enough to competent enough with any of that that you would want to come to me for advice on those i mean water soluble colored pencil or water sol water watercolor pencils are water soluble those I, I i love but that's not really the pastels or crayons so i that i cannot give you advice on jesse said the way it is so well done in the corner the painting looks like it's popping out oh thank you Okay. I think what you'll want to do if you do a live stream and you don't have enough followers where many people are going to watch when it's live, it would feel awkward if you're talking like they're not there, but sh switch your brain to where you're giving a lesson for a future video. This is just a video you don't have to edit. Don't worry so much about, you know, oh, only one person's watching or nobody's watching. Get that out of your head. Plan on doing it is just... I'm making a video that I don't have to edit and do word it as you would just a regular tutorial. Yeah, you're not going to have the conversation back and forth like this, but look at it as I'm giving art tips that somebody, you know, explaining what my process is, all of that. And it will get easier with time, but I wouldn't, I think that that will make it easier if it is something that you're interested in getting started with. The other thing that's really cool about that, if you get started now, is by the time you have a lot of subscribers, you're going to be good at doing live streams. You've got a lot of practice. You're going to have... I mean, the first few live streams that I did, there were so many hiccups, so many problems that I wasn't prepared for. I wish those had happened when I when nobody was watching, when I could learn and figure out how to work all of the programs and and all of that would have been nice if it was done where, before people started watching. So I was making a fool of myself in front of a lot of people all at once. I mean, ever, you guys are awesome. You don't you're cool about me not knowing what the heck I'm doing, but. Um, I definitely don't think that there's, I mean, there's definitely a benefit in learning and figuring out how to do it now before you've got too many people watching. So what I've done, these are a little bit thicker and I'm just going to smudge that out with this brush just a little on the edges. I'll probably use the mop brush a little bit, but I can't just jump to the, straight to the mop brush because these areas are, it's a little bit too dry. So the mop brush is only going to work on the inside wet area I just added. This is actually kind of nice. I got new glasses a couple of months ago and they made my prescription stronger. Normally I'd want to be up close and now I, sitting up close doesn't work well. Back here, this is makes doing the videos a lot easier. I just noticed that that was actually pretty convenient when I saw how far back I was comfortably blending that. That could be a good thing. Um, Jose wants to know if I've tried making artwork with Crayola pencils or crayons just to see what the outcome is. Not since I became an artist. I mean, when I was a teenager, I used them, but nothing I create. It wouldn't have mattered what supplies I was using at that time. Nothing was going, you know, it wouldn't have been that amazing one way or another. So I, I mean, back then, but not, not once I like actually started doing this for a living. Yeah. I like Thu's, um, 
through art illustration. I like how he worded this. Not too concerned right now about my sub count, although I love love you all, but mainly make videos because I have a drive to share my art and hopefully help others. See that if you're going to be a YouTuber, that is the exact attitude that you want to have. You want to do it because you're wanting to help people. If you're doing it just to grow, I mean, that's obviously you want to grow, but if you're just doing it that way, it gets frustrating. Like every time YouTube changes something with their algorithm that affects us all, like it, we're still, we none of us have really recovered from what YouTube decided. Um, I shouldn't say none of us, but where YouTube decided that they were no longer going to notify your subscribers when you have a new video go up. They, all of that, you know, you, you it, it, it's, it can be very discouraging when YouTube changes certain things. But if you're doing it because, you know, you're just, I want to help people. I want to make this because I love doing it and I want to help people. You, that's the type of person or the type of artist, the type of creator who's going to continue making videos long term. Those who just get too frustrated about every little thing that YouTube changes. And it, I mean, I get it. We're going to get frustrated. But when you're so frustrated about because it affects your sub count. So like too much, if that's your main goal. It's got to be every something we're all kind of aware of. But if that is your main goal, you're not going to enjoy making videos for long. So you've got a good way of looking at that, Sue. Um, Andrew said, I don't have the same palette as you. What can I use? P.S. I saw your tins in Hobby Lobby in Valencia. That's awesome. I needed to, um, to purchase them with the coupons quickly. That's so cool. So um, this palette, you can. what I used to use is just a, like a pie tin, but the little square ones, or I can't easily get the ones that are below me. The art supply store actually carries some that are kind of like a pie tin. They're white with a blue rim. I used to use those with tin foil on them. That worked really well. It got a bit wasteful. I, you know, every time I, I want to change out colors and everything, I have to go through a new, um, new thing of foil. So this definitely, this long term is less expensive and less wasteful, but the other way on it, it worked for years. I used it for years and years. That worked really well for me. Some people will actually just get pieces of glass from like a picture frame and use that. That's another option that some people have sworn by using. I was a little bit worried with the edges and the corners on those because I cut myself all the time. Actually, I haven't done it. Uh, now I need to knock on wood, but um, I'm pretty clumsy. This one has these rubberized corners. I don't think you can actually see it here, but they're, it made it me feel a little bit more confident that I wouldn't <laughs> cut myself. So that's why I went with this one. But I know of a lot of artists who just use a piece of glass and that works. Just be careful. Don't break it and cut yourselves. Okay, let's start getting some of the lines in here. Now here, I'm gonna have to start going back and forth between some cool blue and some the warm blue I'm using here over the dolphin, it seems to transition between the two. Let's see. Actually, that's going to get into more purple. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do, okay, so this paintbrush right now, it has this very warm kind of teal color on it. So what I'm going to do, I want to use the same brush though. I have two options. One, I can just clean the whole thing off in my, my brush cleaner with the, the paint thinner and then continue working with it if I really need the color out. But a little bit of this color mixed in isn't going to hurt. So all I'm going to do is take my paper towel, and these are Viva paper towels. Don't use like Bounty or anything else. It doesn't work. Use an old rag or Viva. You want something that's very cloth-like. And I'm going to just pinch that paint off. That gets rid of enough paint. I don't even have to clean this brush in this case because I'm just going to a cooler blue. Now let's say I wanted to go from this color to a bright yellow. I have to clean the brush in that case. I would have to go over to my brush cleaner, clean that out, and then dry it off on the, the brush another brush, the paper towel, because the blue would mix in with that yellow and it'd be very obvious. Here, if it mixes in a little, it's totally okay because I'm going to a color that's similar enough to what I've got here. But I want, let's see, let's go with you are a nice bright blue. You just need a little bit of it. And I'm gonna pull some purple into it to cool it off even more. Add some liquid. I'm going to add some transparent mixing white, or actually, see, I. Acrylic, it's transparent mixing white. The thing that's kind of comparable for oils would be zinc white, which I'm going to add some of that. So it doesn't make it as opaque as titanium white would. This is getting closer. 
So if you look at these two colors, when I talk about cool or warm, see how this one is closer to green on the color wheel? That would be the one that I would consider a warm, a warm blue. Whereas this one is closer to purple on the color wheel, there's my cool blue. Um, let's see, Emily asked if I have any tips for working in a small art studio. Storage, it is all about storage. My pr I lived before where my studio and my bedroom and my living room and the dog room, it was all one space. Uh, my office so everything and it was not a big space it, it at all so it was all about storage and how you store things and even here i mean the amount of crap that i have in this room i say crap it's actually all art stuff that i need but i mean i've got so much stuff in here i have to have good storage so ikea is your friend because it's not super expensive and you can get like the shelves that i have behind me those ones i you can add however many shelves you want to completely get the exact size for whatever space you need to fill stuff in but yeah storage and don't underestimate under things putting boxes in like i had my i had a desk that had storage space under it and within that had separate compartments that i basically made just by this sort of thing putting everything in like these things, you wanna make sure that your store, the way that you're organizing things, you've gotta be extremely well organized. Try to get things that allow you to fold up. Like TV trays are a great thing because I can have, when I need an extra table, like right next to me right now, these are sitting on, it, on TV trays. They're wonderful. When I'm done, I fold them up, stick them in a small space. So there, I don't have to have a big, nice art table. I mean, I'd love to have a big, nice art table that stayed out all the time. I don't have room for that. TV trays I have room for because I can put them away and get them out of the way when I'm working on something else and they're lightweight. If I get paint all over them, they're fairly inexpensive. It's not the end of the world when I inevitably ruin these. Um, and yeah, crates, wooden crates to store things in. Just, it's all about organizing and storage really. And I love a lot of the stuff like the shelves or the dresser that I have over here from Ikea. If I pulled out, part of me thinks I should do it one day just to show you guys. And part of me is like, oh no, I'm not doing that. The, if I pulled everything out that I have in the dresser over here, you wouldn't believe how much stuff I'm able to fit in there because of how it's organized. You've got to make sure that everything's just perfectly, perfectly organized. And oh, that needs to be lighter. Um, when you're in a small space, more so, and I, I'm big on organizing anyway, but when you're in a small space, it's really important. Like you, you don't, you don't have anything to spare. You can get um, foldable tabletop easels like for colored pencil. I don't know why I didn't just do what I do now where I work at my easel for colored pencil. But for some reason I was working on a tabletop. Um, I got a foldable tabletop easel that's a big board that I just would take my other board to. So it's for drawing and it sets up, it it's collapses flat. So I was able to easily put it away when I was done and then it sets up on the table. So just things that fold up, things that you can put away, I think are th something that you really want to look at and consider. There's the color I'm going for. That storage is just the most important thing, how you're storing and trying to find stuff that is collapsible and foldable, like TV trays or the foldable um, easel. And it was an easy, quick thing to fold. You also don't want something that's super complicated. Like, for example, I have good studio lights for when I record my intros to the videos. The one, oh, I don't think you can see it up there. Um, no, I don't think you can. But I have the big, huge um, box lamp, whatever. I have two of them. I am too lazy to set those up every week, so I only leave one. I only use one. It would look better if I used both. I don't. I've never set up the second one because I know that I'm not going to set it up, put it away. You want to try to get set stuff up or look for stuff that's easy to move, stuff that's easy to fold and put away, like TV trays. Yeah, you can get certain furniture that you can put together and take apart easily, but if it's going to take you five minutes, you're probably not going to do it. TV tray, that's, you know, two seconds to fold up. So go for stuff that's easy for storage too, I think is a big deal. Okay, this, see how I made a straight line here? That looks terrible. That needs to round off so that it looks like it's going around the dolphin. Actually, that line is a bit thick. Do I have any Q-tips up here? I do. Yeah, they're all kind of dirty. Oh well, it'll have to work. I want to round or smooth that off. I could use a paintbrush to wipe some of that off too, but let's thin that out. Um, Creative Gen DIY asked if you have any tips for getting noticed on social media for new artists. Post regularly. Be amazing at what you do. 
on social media, the more realistic your work is, it seems like the more attention you're going to get. Um, the more stylized, if you get into more like abstract, it's harder on social media to get the same amount of attention. But get, just because of the nature of, of online, realistic stuff does well. Practice and become amazing at whatever it is you're going to do. I mean, marketing is, is a huge deal. Somebody who markets themselves really well but isn't as good as an artist, let's say artist A markets themselves but they're not as good as artist B, they're going to do, you know, get more well known. But ideally, be be good at what you do. Be, be as good, you know, really work at improving yourself. Um, I've seen sometimes, especially if you're a beginner, if you're a new artist, you may not be at the point where you want to worry too much about social media. Start posting now to get used to it, understand how they work, learn etiquette, which is a big deal. Um, start doing that now, but don't get frustrated if you're not getting a ton of followers right away. It's possible that you're newer in your career, you're not as good as you're going to be. It's not that you won't be there, it's that you're just not there right now, and it makes it harder to get noticed. It's much easier to get noticed if you do everything right as far as, as marketing and get good at what you do. Now, that said, it is definitely possible, we know this very well, to be absolutely terrible at what you do and just market it well enough that it works anyway. But it's so much easier if you can do both at the, at the same time. Become amazing at whatever your style is, at whatever medium, whatever. Be good to where when people are scrolling past, they're like, whoa, what? that's amazing. That you, I wanna look at that more. Um, it's very, very important. And don't be discouraged when you're, I mean, when you're not getting enough attention or as much as you want in the beginning, that's just a part of, of how it works. I mean, when I first started with social media, I, I definitely improved over the years as far as skill wise, but I was still, I had already been a professional for, you know, 10 years before social media came into play. Um, so I wasn't totally new at any of, uh, of the painting side of things, but it was so hard to get people to stop and look. It's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to be discouraged and take it personally. Like, well, no one likes my work then. Not necessarily. You, that, that's where it comes into the marketing side of things. So don't be discouraged if you're having a harder time early on getting the kind of recognition that you're hoping to get. Don't let that discourage you from what you love. And here's the other thing. You have to love what you do with art. If you are doing it because I've, I've met people who are like, I'm going to do it because I'm going to be rich and famous. That's how I'm going to, you know, as an artist. Okay, it's hard as an artist anyway. But that's not a good enough. You, those are not the people who are going to stick to it. It's kind of like what I talk about with YouTube. I'm going to do it because I'm going to be famous I'm, because I'm going to get all these subscribers. That reason, the people who have that attitude go in and don't usually last. There are exceptions, but most of the time they don't they don't last because there are, you're going to have hard times. And it's the same thing with artists and building social media. You're going to have times where you're just not getting attention. And if you're doing it for the attention, you're going to give up on your art. You're going to get discouraged and you're going to miss out on something that could end up being amazing later. So right now, if you are a new artist, yes, go ahead, post on social media, learn the etiquette, learn all of that, get used to it. But focus more right now, really focus on improving your art. And again, I'm assuming you're new to art in general. I think I read that right. Well, maybe I read it wrong. Who knows? But get become amazing at whatever you're doing. That will make it much easier. And still, you've got to still learn marketing. I would recommend listen, see if you can find podcasts that will talk about social media and marketing. That can really help. You can learn so much. There's so many free resources out there for artists now where you can really learn a lot when it comes to building a following and building that. But posting regularly, of course, helps. And try to, don't post things all the time. Look at me, look what I'm doing. What can you offer your fans? You can do, like I remember an artist, um, Daniel, he did a, a post of how to draw trees. It was colored pencil. It was like four or six panes, step by step on how he built up a tree. It's so simple. Like, really simple. That's it, just a tree, not the whole forest. He's done the whole forest. But, I mean, in this case, that post did so well for him because he's offering value to viewers. You won't, don't want to look at social media as, what can you guys give me? Look at it as, what can I give you? That's what does it makes a turnaround for a lot of people because if you're just posting things trying to sell, just posting things trying to get followers, people know that and it's harder to grow that way. But if you're instead posting, what can I do for you? That's the type of, of person who tends to have an easier time gaining followers. Um, let's see. Whoops, scrolled too far again. There's a whole bunch of questions right here and there we go. Um, that fine art guy said, you cut yourself 
I trip. My mom burns herself and my friend gets shot. What's with people? I like being clumsy. Oh, God. One of these days I'll have to tell you about the hot glue gun incident. That one was fun. Um, Sarah Makes Art said, I heard Emma Blackberry... Blackberry say that you shouldn't want to grow your channel to be the next YouTube superstar. You should want to grow your channel because you love what you do and you want to reach more people. Exactly. That is exactly it. Those people who re who do it for that reason are going to be more successful than those who are, I'm just going to be famous. I remember watching a video of a girl, um, she, her and her, her boyfriend, that was their whole thing. We're, I'm going to be a famous vlogger. I'm going to be... Fa they didn't let... Well, actually, she shot and killed him, so that was a whole other thing. But, whoops. Um, they did a stunt trying to get popular. But their whole point was, I'm going to be famous. We're going to be famous on YouTube. Why? Why? I don't... You're not going to last. No, that's not how... You're, that doesn't work. Plus, also, don't shoot people. But, um, yeah, that was... It, it, it's sad to see people do that because they're going to be let down. They're going to be unhappy. They're not going to have fun making videos because they're doing it for the wrong reason. They're not offering value. They want their fans to be the ones that provide them value. Oh, um, Dufo said, that's a great suggestion. For the glass on these, he said you can gl hot, glue gla hot glue the glass edges. That is genius. I did not even think of that. Although, as I mentioned before, there was the incident with me and a hot glue gun. So I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> that's a really good, uh, good suggestion. Like, really good suggestion. Um, let's see. Aiden Sean Art said, one, one thing I never focused on is archival products. I've always been simple with supplies, mechanical pencils, gel pens, etc. When you're not selling art, how important is this? Well, it depends on how important it is for your artwork to last long term. If all you care about is make it good, get a photo, maybe you can sell prints of later, you don't have to worry about those things. If you're just learning, you don't have to worry about those things. Um, if you care that later on it might not last that long, then like that's why it matters when you're selling because you need those to last long but if that's all if you're not selling that it, it really isn't a big deal so like um products that are not light fast you don't really have to worry about if you don't care how long they last um, let's see Catherine said just keep the frame for glass pictures palette no worry about some sharp edges only downside is when cleaning with a the scraper they tend to crack exactly that was my concern there even this one when I was cleaning today because it was really dried on there um, I was worried I was it didn't crack it but I was having to add so much pressure to scrape things that I uh, regular glass if it was in a frame because it would be lifted up that would have absolutely cracked Valerie has never been to Ikea you're missing out on the worst of Disneyland lines and people and really cheap furniture that's great for storage. <laughs> I both love and hate going to Ikea at the same time. Let's see. Gregory asked, how do you know when it's time to replace your needed eraser? I don't know if I've ever, I always lose mine before they would even remotely need to be replaced. I've never even had to think about it. I mean, if you, it gets to the point where you can't lift or erase anything without creating smudges from whatever is stuck in it, that would be a pretty good sign to me that I've made it, you know, it, it, it's on its last leg then. But I always lose mine well before that happens. I lose things really easily. Aiden wants to know if I can elaborate on the good marketing aspect of social media. Well, that's what I was talking about. You know, good marketing is largely what are you offering the people you want to follow you? If you're just, look at me, look what I'm doing. Look at what I, this, look at, that doesn't work. Or if you're posting things that are just boring. Seriously, no one cares, unless you're a food blogger, no one cares about your lunch. So, I mean, you can do funny things like I'll post photos of me and my coffee because it's funny because everyone already comments on how fast I talk and I just think my coffee is funny. So, you know, that's kind of me and, and the coffee thing. But I'm only going to do that so much. Um, I usually do it before a live stream. I'm, I don't want to post what I had for breakfast. What did I eat for this? What did I... No one... That's very boring. And I mean, I have people who I follow now who I love their art and they post so much of food and I'm just like, no more. I don't care about the food. You're filling up my news stream with food. I don't. I, um, so that's, you know, just be aware of what what value are you providing? Um, 
I have to watch myself even. Like I just posted, I took a bunch of really pretty photos of my orchids that are in bloom right now. I posted it on my personal Facebook and I was gonna post it on Instagram and I'm like, you know what? I have posted so much personal stuff. The chickens, the, although, I mean, I know you guys like the chickens, but the chickens, I had photo of me. I had a photo of like non-art related things. My, um, my mag not magnolia, um, gardenia flower. I had things that weren't like four posts in a row of non-art related things. And for me, I start thinking, okay, that's a little bit too much me and not enough of art or something that would motivate or help you guys. Um, for market, for artists too, one thing that I really like post motivational things. There's so many great motivational quotes and a lot of artists like, we like that. We like motivation. Can you post some of that? Is that something that might fit in to, building a fan base. Um, there's a guy, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, Vaynerchuk, I can't say it. He, um, he's, I'll warn you right now, if you're going to go look him up, he can be a bit on the obnoxious side, very, like very crude, very, he swears a lot. So, you know, I wouldn't watch him while your children are in the room, but he's got some good advice. Some of his advice is like actually violates terms of services on platforms. So you've got to be aware of that with like, he has a book and he offers advice. that's like, well, that's a violation of, that's always been a violation of Facebook terms of service. But one thing that he says that I really, really like is, um, he, or one of his books, it's like, what was it? P jab, jab, punch, jab, jab, upper. I don't know. Cause I don't know boxing. Basically give, give, take, offer something to your followers. Offer something else to your followers, something that they find of value, not, oh, look, I'm having a sale. Oh, look at this. You can go buy this for me now. Oh, look at me. Oh, look at my food. Oh, look at, not that. Give something for free, advice, tips, motivation, two times before you ask them to buy something for you. And then repeat that. Two gives, one take. Two gives, one take. I do more gives than takes than that. But um, you don't want to just make posts that are only self-serving. People don't they're not always going to be interested in that. And that's, uh, someone always goes, well, this person does it and it's okay. This person doesn't. It. Yeah. You're always going to have exceptions where somebody made that work. And there's, there's usually other factors in there, but the easy thing to way to look at it is what value are you offering them? Why should they follow you? Why would, would they want to follow you when they've got a million other artists doing something very similar? What is it that you're doing that's better, more motivating, different, something like that? Those are the things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to social media or building a following. As far as like marketing and getting sales, that goes back to that give, give, take. Free things, free things, or free tips. I'm not saying things. You don't have to like ship them free things. And then here's my item for sale. Now go back to here's value I'm providing you, value I'm providing you. Here's something you can buy from me. Just watch the amount that you're doing that. Like people will sign up for Patreon or like get a Patreon account going and get really excited and non-stop spam. Here's my Patreon. Here's my Patreon. Here's my Patreon. That turns people off. You don't want to push it too much. Now, I'm a little bit on the extreme opposite. I don't post a lot about Patreon myself, which is probably not um, super recommended. I, I think I am too extreme on that, but um, I could po post more. But just keep that in mind when you have something that you're offering for sale. If you push too hard, you won't get anything. Okay. Neil Patel Art asked if I would rec. Whoops, scroll too far. It just, it's where I wanted to be and it jumps. Um, let's see. Go back. Oh my gosh, I missed so many. Um, Neil asked if I would recommend Canson Me Tones paper for colored pencil. Yeah, I actually like the Canson Me. It's rougher. It's a, the result that you get is a little bit different. I've done a few projects on it and I really liked it. I use the smooth side though, um, not the rough side that you would typically use for like pastels. Um, Ed for Fun said, I am a beginner and have 72 Prismacolors and 12 Polychromos. I want to make portraits, but I would like to ask where to start with my colored pencils. Also, what GSM paper? The heavier, the better. Like 140 pound watercolor paper is what I like the best. Um, what is it? Um, Stonehenge. They tend to be a little bit more lightweight. That's as lightweight as I would personally go. That one's fine. Um, I want to say it's about 90 and I could be wrong on that or 90 pound. Um, I don't remember the GSM. I want to say it's 300 was the one equivalent to 400 or 150, 140. I don't have a memory. Don't ask me things. Um, 
but I like those. Something heavier, I definitely like the best. Um, now, on the flip side, you also have heavy, like, vellum, Bristol vellum, which is super heavy, but it's too smooth. So it's not just about the weight of the paper. Sometimes the texture is just too smooth and, and not ideal. It's the pig, There's not enough tooth on the, the paper for pigment to stick to that works well for my techniques anyway. Um, for portraits, if you've not done portraits before, or you're new to colored pencil altogether, I would say practice painting or drawing roses because you've got the, the smoothness you want to learn to blend around like the base of the rose, the edges, the flower petals that fold over. Uh, one that's open more that has, you know, folds and, and curves. If you can learn how to blend that, that's going to make it easier once you start on a portrait. If you start with portraits, it can be very overwhelming because one little thing is off and it, it's it's noticeable. Like, I mean, if your nose is a little too far to the left, it's noticeable. If you're drawing a flower petal and the petal's a little too far to the left, no one's going to know the, notice the difference. So it's more encouraging to start and learn your blending with a rose than it is. And I say roses because they have so many interesting curves, something that shape. Um, a gardenia, actually, some of those flower petals would be perfect for that as well. But something that's going to help you learn to shade curves so that when you work on a face, you understand how to do that already. Because a face is such a challenge anyway and getting proportions and perspective and everything like that right. But starting with a flower would be where I would recommend starting. Let's see how many times I can use the word starting in one sentence. Do I cat um, Kat Van Horn asked if I catalog all of the art that I do? If so, how... And okay, um, you've got lots of questions in there that I can't answer because no, I don't. Um, I'm really, really bad about it. I've completed thousands of pieces of art and I'm not exaggerating there over the years. And every once in a while, I'll come across a photo or something of a really old one that I'm like, wow, okay, I know that was mine, but I don't remember doing it. So I, I'm really bad about cataloging. So I can't really give you any tips there. Probably should. It's like, I don't know, when I started, I didn't realize how far I was going to go with art. I mean, when I really first, it's like, yeah, I want to be an artist, but it's kind of like, I want to be a unicorn when I grow up. So, I mean, I knew I was determined to make it happen, but uh, yeah, that's, I wasn't really um, thinking ahead. And that was before compute, well, there were computers. I didn't have a computer back then. So that wouldn't be as easy, but a computer um, program, just anything, a Word document where you, you, you could put a photo and then the year, the title, the, all of that, the, the dimensions, that would be nice to have. Also, who you sold it to, when you sold it, that would be really nice because there's even times now, I can go through my own gallery on my website, I don't even remember if I still own half of those. I update my shop regular, you know, or when one sells, I make sure I update that because it would be, I don't want to accidentally sell the same thing twice, but I, I'll look at things in the gallery and go, do I still have that? Where is that? I don't honestly remember if I sold it or not. I have to look at my shop instead of the gallery and see if it's in there. Um, and then assume I can find it if, if it hasn't sold, it's probably, everything is behind me somewhere or on my own walls. Phyllis says, I, now I want to oh, know the hot glue gun story. There were big blisters, and that's gross, and no one needs to hear that all over my legs. It, yeah, it didn't end well. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's true. Sarah Makes Art says, people who wanted to be famous just to be famous existed before the internet. Now, I, I remember what, reading a comment from somebody who did this long post, kind of a, I'm unhappy with my life. I want to be rich and famous. I want people to fall all over me when they see me. I want to be influential. But he had no idea what he wanted to do to get to that point. And that was the weirdest thing to me. I'm like, I don't, wait, what, what, why? Why would you want the rich and famous? I mean, yeah, that happens with certain career paths. But that is the goal seems so odd to me. Or like, fine, I'm like, I don't, I don't think you're going to get there because you don't even know what it is you want to do. No clue job-wise, career-wise, where this person wanted to go. And it was like, that's different. Um, it's not going to do much for you, but that's, we'll go with different. But it's like, just the mindset with that, I think will make it very hard to succeed in much. <clears throat> Courtney said, Fine Art America is selling prints. On mine, the site is not offering sizes for people to purchase anything bigger than an 8 by 6.3. Do you know what the trick is to getting different sizes? I am going to guess you're uploading a very small file uh, or small enough that it can't go bigger because the file can't offer it. I mean, in your settings, you can choose how big you want it to go, but it will limit certain things depending on what your file resolution is. 
So that's it's probably something on your end with your settings you need to mess with or the photograph. But I also, as a general rule when selling prints, like let's say <clears throat> this is a 16 by 20. I won't sell this any larger in a print than an 18 by 24 because it won't look good. It's when you blow something up, it looks worse. If you shrink it down, it looks better, but you don't want to keep going bigger and bigger. So if it was something, let's say you drew a small piece, you don't want to try to sell that as a, as a 24 by 36 inch poster. It's going to look terrible. So part is that part is that your file just might be super, super tiny. <clears throat> um, let's see. Toby said, if I'm wanting to get back, get into people or portraits, should I start with color or black and white? I usually start students with black and white. It is way easier to control in black and white than it is in color because color is a whole other thing you've got to learn blending and which colors to use trying to worry about that and learning to draw a portrait is hard plus if you work in black and white that's also strengthening your skills in your values understanding how light your like light, lights need to be how dark your darks need to be and how they work together so i always started students off ideally in black and white now sometimes students just want to jump into color and if that's the case fine if they're not interested in in black and white but if they're that's an option i would definitely say black and white first get to you know do at least a few pieces i'd say three four pieces in black and white before you jump into color it'll make it way easier for you when you do jump into color <clears throat> caution artist at play said how i just described ikea is exactly how she feels about walmart only with her and walmart it's more of a hate than love you know, certain Walmarts, we have, the Walmarts in California were very different than the Walmarts here in Texas. Ours are, they're cleaner, they're um, maintained better. <clears throat> but there's some that I don't want to go to because we usually will go like late, late at night. Some of them seem not so safe. The one, um, we went to one a couple of weeks ago, we were coming back from Dallas. So we stopped by and the one in Frisco, which was near where we used to live. <coughs> And it was so nice. I had, because I get my tank tops and undershirts because they're super cheap there. Um, you know, I like cheap. So I I stocked up. I got so much stuff that my the Walmart near me doesn't have. I was so excited. But it was like, it was probably, I'd say close to one or two in the morning when we went in. So there weren't a lot of people there. And it was just fun because it was like all the stuff, because I normally don't go to Walmart. There was so much stuff, like the, the tank tops and undershirts that I like. And I stocked up on a lot while I, I was there. I told my husband I want to go back like every other month and get more. Um, <laughs> the Art of Joseph Fincham said, food posts make me want to eat a bullet. I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it either. It's just, no. Um, tomorrow wants to know if I've ever considered painting a manatee. I've actually painted several, several, several. That didn't come out right. Um, yeah, I haven't in years, but yeah, I actually have painted quite a few. <clears throat> um, Silver wants to know what layer I'm on with this painting. I have no idea. I don't actually count. I mean, this is with oils. Like I already had the acrylic underpainting with oils. I want to say this is day three, four, three or four. But as far as layers, because one day may have multiple layers because one will start to dry and I can do the next layer right away. So I'm not sure. That's what it was. Um, oh, I just scrolled for too far. I got all excited and then it scrolled. Dang it. Come back. Come back. Through Art Illustration says he's been watching Gary V. Uh, it's jab, jab, right hook. That's what it was. I'm like, jab, jab, punch, uppercut? I don't know. Yeah, that's the name of, of that. And it's one of the best pieces of advice, I think, for social media. <clears throat> give, give, take. Or give, 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 give. Maybe do you want to buy this is my version. I'm really bad at market or like selling stuff. I don't like, I have so many paintings and prints and I hardly tell you guys about it. Cause I'm like, I feel like bad. I don't know. I feel needy. Um, PZ Cherokee said, Lisa, you're just as valuable for your business tips as your techniques. Thank you. <clears throat> Why am I congested all of a sudden? Do art wants to know what type of paper I use for prints. I don't make prints myself. I don't have a good enough printer for that. So I, use Fine Art America. Or like for postcards, I use Vistaprint, which actually I need to get those out for Patreon. I think I, January needs to go out. January and February I need to get done. Or yeah, I think that's what it was I'm, I'm on right now. 
Um, let's see. Do I name my paintings? If so, what is the name of this one? I don't know what this one will be. Yay? Is that a pot? Can I just name him Yay? Because I love the colors and I want to put them on my wall. Yay! Um, I don't know what the name of this will be. I often name the paintings after songs that I'm listen to, listening to at the time of painting. Like if I, um, I have a lot of paintings named after Amberlynn because I'm obsessed with them and I will listen to Amberlynn nonstop. Like they have, I mean, they have a lot of songs luckily, but I can listen to Amberlynn nonstop for years on, actually I've been doing that um, for years on end. So I have a lot of names or paintings named after their songs. I totally fangirled out, and I know it was their social media person, not the band, but they followed me on Twitter, and I, I might have peed a little. Okay, because I'm, like, seriously such a huge fan of that band. Um, Picks by Lee said, have you used watercolor paper blocks? What is the difference? I received an email from Legion Paper about a new circle water paper today. I'm curious. Looks neat. The only watercolor block I have fell apart, so it didn't even work as the block. That was what I painted my... What did I paint on that? Oh, um, the lionfish, I think, was on a piece of paper out of it. I couldn't use it as a block. I think... Are these blocks? I don't even know if these new ones I just got are blocks. Let's find out. Um, watercolor, cold press. These might be blocks. Yes, this is a block. So I have a couple now. We'll see if the arches holds its shape better, the, these little ones. Um, so I don't actually know because I've never complete or worked well in the block. It should, I'm hoping it'll hold its shape real well if I work on it. We'll find out. I have no idea, basically. There's the short end of that story. Rolled too far. <laughs> Caution artist a place. So tank tops are the exact reason I go there too. They're better than everywhere else. Like I, I look at Target and they they cost too much at Target and they're not the same shape I like. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Whoops, I just had a question and it scrolled too far. Marissa said, love you, Rick. Thank you. Do you ever get burnt out while working on a piece? If so, how do you overcome it? Absolutely. There are times where, like, even this one's been taking me too long. If I get a piece of artwork done in a week, I don't usually get burnt out on that. But when I start, like, I get busy with other things, I don't get it done, I get to a point where I'm like, I'm bored, I want to do something new. So for me, one thing, I cannot allow myself to start a new piece until the first piece, the one I'm working on, is done. Because if I do, I'll never go back to it. It'll never get finished. So YouTube helped me a lot with that because I was on a schedule, a, such a strict schedule for so long, I had to have a new piece of art, artwork done. It was getting finished one way or another. Like it, dislike it, didn't matter. I'm finishing it. I mean, I still do that. But um, that was, I don't know, it needs to be a little bit lighter. Um, that's the big thing for me is not letting me, myself start something new until it's finished. And it's not that I, when I get burnt out, it's not like I don't like the piece anymore. It's just like I've been working on it too long. The octopus piece was one of those. I just spent so long on that. It was like, I just need this to be done now. And the, I just can't let myself start something new until I finish it. Whoops. And then I scroll too far again. Oh, that's so frustrating. Gail wants to know if I will show you Nugget tonight. I probably won't personally show you Nugget ever. Maybe in a year. I don't know. So here's the thing. Birds, I'm like a bird whisperer. Um, I grew up with them. I raised them. It's You know how certain things just make sense to you? Bird communication and holding birds and interacting with them and all that just makes a lot of sense to me. For, I, I'm guessing that's why birds like me. They think I'm one of them. So um, most birds, like it, yeah, well, the short version of that chicken bonded to me. He was supposed to be my husband's bird, but he bonded to me. So like chicken makes it very, very clear to everyone. He wants me. He'll let other people hold him and he's super cute about it. But he, and my husband still spends a lot of time with him, more time than I do actually. But chicken wants me. He like loses his mind trying to get to me. Running to the door. When I leave the door, he'll jump off my husband and run to the door that I went out of trying to get me to come back. Um, calling for me is actually kind of sad. He wants to be with me all the time sad and cute at the same time but we don't want a chance that happening with the new bird um because it's like i don't want 800 birds because i kept getting they all kept accidentally bonding to me so this one the 
the parrotlet, um, Nugget, he is my husband's bird. So until like the only, as far as that bird is concerned, I am the cleaning lady and the horrible person who will do his wings and nails. And that's it. Until we're certain he's completely bonded with my husband. Um, so no, I won't bring him on video. If I get photos, it's because my husband puts them somewhere and I'll take the camera. I don't want to interact with him at all. Just like even, we still had to hand feed him for a few days. I showed, I hand fed him, got him started just to show my husband how to do it. And then had my husband do it from then on out because we really want to make sure that he bonds to Matt. Um, and it's not that the birds don't like Matt. It's just that I have a weird way with birds. So, um, it's kind of fun though, because now chicken's all mine, but yeah, no, I won't bring him on video. No, the only, eventually, if Nugget ends up, if Nugget and Chicken end up being friends where they'll want to sit next to each other on a branch, we don't know if that'll ever happen. Um, I'll never cage them together, but if they want to sit, like, outside the cage on a branch together, if I was working in, like, pencils, I, I could bring them both in to where they were sitting during a live stream, but I can't do that. That would probably be, you know, six months to a year down the line. I need to make sure that this guy's really bonded to Matt first. Um... Because I always, seriously, you have no idea how guilty I have felt all this time that that bird bonded to me when he was supposed to be my mat, or my mat, my husband wanted a buddy. He wanted it to be his bird. So luckily cockatiels are pretty good. They'll hang out with people even when they're not bonded to that person. But chicken is like such a drama queen making sure Matt knows he prefers me. So yeah, I'm not, um, nugget I will not be handling at all anytime soon besides wings and nails and then when I clean cages. That was the other deal I made, Matt. I told him when I wanted to get a small bird to be in the room with chicken, I was just thinking a parakeet. So I wasn't thinking a bird that Matt would really bond to, just one that would be in the room with chicken. So um, I told him, I'm like, I'll take over cleaning cages, both cages, if you go ahead and let me get another one so chicken's not alone during the day. So Matt was like, done, because he just didn't want to be responsible for the cage anymore. So that, that was kind of a funny, um, funny deal there. So I'm just slowly, like, there's no necessary, like, definite rhyme or reason what I'm doing. I'm looking at a reference photo that I got from, where did this one come from? Storyblocks, which was the old graphic stock. So if you're, you have a membership with them, they have this dolphin there. I changed the color quite a bit from what the water was. But um, I'm just picking a spot. Actually, that I made way darker than it needed to be. Actually, we'll just pull a little out in the middle. So Nugget is has the cutest, if look up videos on YouTube for a parrotlet, their chirp is so little and quiet, they're really quiet compared to a cockatiel, so cute. Um, Michael said, I have a similar question to last week, but updated, does blotchy background with OMS have anything to do with me using cold press water or cold press paper? Absolutely. Yeah, I, with colored pencil, I do not like cold, like cold press watercolor paper. Now, with watercolor pa paper or watercolor pencils, that's a little bit different. But for colored pencil, yeah, it's too rough. And the way the nature of, of colored pencils, I don't like cold press at all for colored pencils. So that will have something to do with it. Um, Meonicorn said, I've been working on the Patreon Challenge Rose oil for two weeks now and finally got one petal that I'm satisfied two minutes ago. That's awesome. Post it for us over in our group. I want to see. I need to actually update another challenge for you guys um, too. Yeah, Creative Gen DIY asks if I can bring chicken on today. I can't because I'm working in oils. I don't want him in. He can't be in this room until I'm hoping to get this done by tomorrow. And then I need this air. Luckily, that it's warm enough. I'll be able to leave the sliding glass door open most of the time. So I need to really air out this room before he's allowed to be in here. The painting will be dry within a night or two. So it, that won't be stinking the room up anymore. But I need to make sure the whole room is really aired out before chicken's allowed to come back in here. Because the oil painting fumes can kill birds. Whoops. Scroll too far. JBC thirteen art said you should have, you should have a chicken cam because we already want to see him all the time. You know that'd be a that would be funny. Have one on chicken. I was actually thinking about that yesterday because the baby bird. We had to do a bunch of errands the last two days, and the baby bird was by himself in his cage. And I start to worry. I'm like, what if he falls in his water dish? What if he? And he's obviously fine. But you know, you do the whole new baby, and now I'm worried about all the things. But he, um, I was thinking. I wish I had my 
my security, the alarm system. I wish I had the security cam right now on the birds so I could check in on them. I was thinking like, maybe I should order another cam just to put on the birds for that, but that'd be funny to put a webcam for them. Picks by Lee said, so Nugget is gonna be Matt's co-pilot for video games and chewing up all his comics. Ahem, reading his comics. Oh, Matt is, those comics don't go around those birds. Matt is like the biggest, um, like, you, he's very, I'm not allowed to touch his comics because I might bend the spine or I, I can't even touch them. So, um, yeah, no, he, that, that part's not a concern, but eating the cords for the video games, that is, that actually chicken his, not the cords, but he'll like bug him, um, he'll pull on the cords. Matt watches, we don't leave him loose to where he can get damn or hurt himself, but yeah, that will definitely be happening. It's cute though, Matt takes turns. He doesn't want Chicken to feel left out because Chicken's used to hanging out with him at night when Matt gets home from work. So he's been putting Nugget to bed a little bit early so he can have just one-on-one -on -one time with the chicken. We are crazy people. But our chickens are happy, so I guess that's what matters, right? Gail said, I completely understand my, bir my bird Maddox chants for me every morning until I get up and he wins. My cockatiel Sunny wanted only me too. Whoops, cool, too fast. Pat, Patty Picasso said I should paint my birds. I actually have painted chicken. I did a, a graphite of chicken and then I painted them on the back of the stand that my Wacom tablet is on over there. He's got a little painting on the back of that. Tomorrow said, if I could choose a spirit animal, what would it be? Coffee, without a doubt. Oh, I've got weird like oil smell, come, not paint, but coming in from outside. Somebody's doing something with their car out there. That was unpleasant. Wow, it smells like new tires almost. Ew. I do not like. Cockatiels equal a hole punch with feathers. Oh, that is so true. GT Paris said, just wanted to say thank you for all your instruction videos. I've learned a great deal from you and very much enjoy your style and personality. Oh, thank you. Chicken is the added bonus. Thanks again. So I'm just letting there be a transition. You can see I've got a lot of cool blue, that purpley blue, and then the warm blues, but they make, they stand out so much putting them next to each other like this. And that's not something that I would do on every painting, but it, it this painting, it's really working well on. Usually I just pick one um, cool or warm and stick with it, but for this one, the two are working really nicely. That's not, that's not the oil paint. It's definitely something coming in from outside that stinks. At least it's not a skunk. We have a, I'm right on like this nature area thing. So you've got a lot of, a um, lot of different types of wildlife and skunks get ran over all the time. So both sad and stinky. Let's see this area here. Actually, that's a little on the dark side. So let's, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna wipe it off. I'm just gonna take a little bit of liquid, a little bit of my zinc white, and I'm gonna go right on top and let it blend on the canvas. So it'll blend in with the blue that's already there. And now I can smudge that just a bit. Now you wanna watch with oils. It, it will really any medium, over blending is an issue for anything, but oils especially, they blend so beautifully and so easily that it's easy to go, okay, I just blended that, it looks good, it must need more, more would be better, and blend and blend and blend, and now you have no, I just lost everything I did, I just basically wiped it all off, or created mud by blending it into anything that's wet next to it. So make sure that you don't overdo it. Blend less than what you think you need, and then go back and add more if you do need more. 
It's always easier to, to go back and blend more. You can't undo over blending, but you can always blend more if that ends up being needed. Valerie said, I have a skunk that tries to visit me on the porch. A new one every year from baby until adult. Oh, I think skunk, skunks are so cute. I really want one. Of, I want all the animals as a pet, though. What am I saying? I'm reading a book right now, and she has a pet skunk named Lucy. Grum said, I love the name Chicken. I have a Quaker parrot named Turkey. <laughs> he is about 13 year olds now, years old now. Little birds are afraid of the huge ones that can bite your face off. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, my husband loves blue and golden cause. He really wants one. Well, I grew up, my parents bred them. I love them, but I also don't want one in my house. They're, they're too noisy, too destructive. It's just not a fit for my lifestyle. And I think unless you can't, especially with the big ones, if you aren't spending almost all your time with the bird, the bird's not going to be happy. Like it's natural for them to be with their what they consider their mate all the time. So to not be with that, that person can be a little bit stressful for them. And it's not that they can't do okay, you know, with somebody who works and such, but I just don't think it's fair and it doesn't fit with our lives. So... With Matt, he wanted a blue and gold, and I'm like, not till you retire and you're home all the time with it. I'm, uh, uh, uh. But um, we were visiting with, or not visiting, we were at a bird shop locally, and they've got a, a blue and gold that lives there. And the bird was doing everything to get Matt's attention to go over to him. And Matt likes to kiss our birds. He's always kissing the birds on the top of the head and the chest and whatever. And, um, which is hilarious. My husband's a big guy. So having this big guy kissing this little teeny tiny hummingbird sized bird is adorable. But he, um, he was, I'm like, get, keep your face away from that blue and gold. Cause even though that blue and gold was being super sweet and super happy, he, he anything can make it decide, Oh, I'm going to keep your nose now. So, um, yeah, I have to kind of remind him of that. And he always, my husband is always, always says, I know, I know. And I'm like, I don't think you know, cause your face is too close to that bird right now. Trust me. It's not that it's a bad bird. It's that it's a bird and you just don't, you can't predict somebody else's bird, wh wh how they're going to react to something. Um, Bryson said, I have an idea for your next painting. Could you draw like an underwater scene, maybe with a sunken treasure on the ocean floor, gems to precious, precious metals, etc." That would actually be really cool. That would be cool to set up my own photo, photo of, like if I had a 10 gallon tank, put in like fake gems and such so I could see how the water bounced around. That is something I may do in the future. Not anytime soon, because I have nowhere to keep a 10 gallon tank to do that with, but I really like that idea. Marilyn said, love your new birdie. Have an African gray and a red berry belly parrot. Birds are cool. They are. I love how they smell too. Like, I love the smell of feathers. Matt thinks I'm crazy. So I'm going smell, to smell chicken. I'm like, he smells so good. Okay, I am crazy. Okay, let's see. Start pulling a little bit of detail around that. Just soften it. But see, when I soften it, it's only a couple of brush strokes. You don't want to blend and blend and blend. That's the biggest thing you need to learn not to do. Actually, this one should move back to the teal color. Hmm, it should be teal, but I kind of like this. Let's see, decisions. Yeah, we'll switch to the teal. So again, I'm going to switch right now. I've got the cool blue on this brush, but I'm going to a color that's so close. I don't know how well that shows up. So you can see here, it's like a purpley blue versus the teal. All I have to do is wipe. I can keep reusing this. I don't even have to clean it in the brush cleaner. I'm just going to, or paint thinner, I'm just going to wipe most of it off so that when I wipe, see how not much color comes off on that. There's a little bit, not much. So I don't have to clean the brush in between a color when I'm moving from one color to another that's this similar to each other. Again, if I went from this to yellow, okay, then I'm going to want to rinse it in the paint thinner if I want to use the same brush. Marilyn said, I stole my macaw because I couldn't pay attention to him. He got mean. And my umbrella cockatoo, he plucked very bad. Oh, yeah, the cockatoos are really bad about that because they can't handle not being with the person they, or the wrong color, the person they consider to be their mate. That's I always said that I wanted another cockatoo. I love cockatoos. They're so sweet. But they don't do real well if they're left alone too much. And... It just, they just don't fit my lifestyle, unfortunately, as much as I love them. I, I couldn't provide a home that would keep them happy enough, I guess. So the little guys, the cockatiel, and apparently now the parrotlet seems to be a perfect fit for us. Matt wants, eventually, when we have a, a house, he really wants either a pionis or he really likes the... Um, 
Bronzewing, but I'm not sure if he would be picking up at that point. When it came to the time where he got to get a new, get a big bird, well, big, Pyotis isn't that big. He, I don't know if he'd wait for the color he really wants, but he wants either that or he was thinking a kayak, but I think that those, um, I think he would like the per personality type of a Pyonis better, but he wants to name him Turkey, a bigger one. Um, let's see, Tammy said, could the brush size and type also affect the blending? Absolutely. I, this one is a, a Taclon bristle, or yes, a Taclon bristle brush. It's like a gold Taclon, just cheap generic one. And it's blending beautifully all on its own for the type of glazing that I'm doing. If I switch to a synthetic hog hair, it's not going to blend as well. Or in this case, this brush is kind of stiff. If I switch to like a Taclon bristle brush with oils because they're so thick, if the brush is too soft, it will create streaks. Acrylics a little bit different with acrylics. If the brush is too stiff, it tends to create streaks. So you have to find the right stiffness and type of brush for the type of effect that you're getting. Yeah. It will absolutely make a difference which one you're using. So here, I'm just applying the paint with the Taclon I'm using. This is kind of like a synthetic bristle, a little bit stiffer, cheaper, generic -y. I don't even know what they actually would be. Um, some places I've seen them listed as um, synthetic hog hair, but they don't feel like that to me. They feel more, I don't know. I don't know what you would consider these. But they're, um, if, if this brush is like the brand new, let me see if I've got a new one. This one is on the newer side and it's just so, actually, no, that's not a good, good example. Let's see if I have another one. Well, here are two. These are both basically the same kind of brush. Set that down. See how bendy this is? It's really, really bendy. So this is gonna be a good one for blending like what I'm doing right now. This one is really stiff. It's more damaged, um, stuff's dried in it more. So even though it's the same kind of brush, the bristles are, the stiffness is different again, just because I haven't, I didn't clean it well. But this would not blend well with this. This is too stiff. So you've gotta find one that's like just right. You play Goldilocks with paint brushes basically. And you wanna avoid brushes like, let's see if I've got any in here that are an example of that. I mean, the mop brush would be something similar. I wouldn't want to scoop paint with a mop brush and apply it. It's too soft. It's too bendy. It's not going to work right for oils. When SG said, my aunt, my aunt, eh, I can't talk. Aunt had a blue and gold macaw for over 20 years. His name was Dopey. He was in a divided cage with a cockatoo. Me as a kid said they were in the barn. Yep, he was. Oh, wait, I just read. I skipped that. He was in a divided cage, um, pretty bird, and grabbed his... Grabbed him through the shared wall. Oh, no. Yeah, I didn't want to, like, our chicken and, and nugget. Nugget, even though he's, like, the size of a hummingbird, they're known for um, being more aggressive. So, like, I can't even have his, don't want the cages, not that they would easily do that, but I don't want the cages touching because I'm afraid that nugget would grab chicken's toes. Hillary wants to know if I still do video critiques. I haven't in a long time. My plan is to do like a live stream video critique where I critique lots at once. I just haven't done it yet. I'm so far behind on work. I'm so far behind. I've got um, smart art box projects I want to do. I haven't even opened some because I like the surprise of opening those boxes. They're so much fun. But I've got to do some of those. I've got so, like I did the projects for two of them. I just need to make the videos for them. I've got to edit two videos tomorrow. I have, I'm so far behind on stuff right now. So I have not done a critique live stream, but I want to. So with this brush, for what I'm trying to do here, I can pretty much blend it even with the brush itself without having to take a second brush for that. Now this brush, one of the things, again, going back to the brush size, this brush is so soft and bendy, I'm not actually having enough paint come off the brush onto the canvas for this area. It's not sticking well enough. So I'm going to need to switch probably to a slightly more stiff brush. And here, this is actually okay now. And for me, it's not something where I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I know for certain this is the brush I need for this technique. A lot of it comes down to, I tried this brush, didn't do what I wanted. I wish this brush was stiffer, so I grabbed the brush that is stiffer. Um, as we asked if Nugget is bigger than chicken, no. Nugget's about the size of a, a um, hummingbird, where it chicken is a cockatiel. So chicken is way bigger. Uh, Marilyn asked if Nugget is a leopard. No, he's not. He's a parrotlet. 
They're much smaller. They're shaped like a lovebird, but much, much smaller. Less common. You don't see them as often. Like, I've actually never seen one in a store. I've never seen one in person before. I didn't realize how small they were. Because when you see videos of them or you see photos of them, they look bigger. Like, even in all the photos I had posted so far of Nugget, he looks way bigger than he is. I can't get one where you can really see. He is tiny, tiny. So cute. I was really impressed with, like, lovebirds are actually pretty noisy. Um, uh, Nugget is super quiet. Like, his chirps are adorable. Like, they're so quiet. He chirps a lot, but they're very quiet. I think I've had finches that were noisier than he is. Yeah, yeah, I like the Princess um, of Wales parakeet. I've seen those. They're very, very pretty. Yeah, we've considered several birds around that size um, for Matt when he realized he needed to get his own bird because I apparently stole his. So he was looking at a lot of different birds around that size. Um, Ringneck parakeets and like just a bunch of different ones he's been researching. With Matt, he's going to love any of them. He just, he's a huge, huge animal lover. I don't think he's super picky as long as he gets his bird. It still cracks me up though. Anytime that bird comes anywhere near me, Matt's scooping him up. Get away from her. He's so worried. He doesn't even like when I was in the, the room um, taking care of chicken. He's like, he, stop talking to him. He's going to hear your voice and bond to you. I'm like, that's not going to be what, it, I'm not in contact with him. So it'll be fine. My voice alone won't do it. Because we think that's one of the things why chicken liked me so much. My voice being high pitch. Um, he likes to mimic me. Phyllis, um, just Google Parrotlet, so cute. What color is yours? He is green, and he's got on his rump, he has, like, it's almost like an ultramarine, like, super violet purple on his back, and his, he's a, oh, what is it? Speckled? Specks? Like, sparks? I can't remember now. Um, but green, and then that, like, ultramarine blue. His photo is over on Instagram. You can see him there. They have really pretty colors with like teals and grays and beautiful little birds. Huge variety in colors depending on the area they're from and what um, color mutations they are. Marlene said she tried to breed the parrotlets once and had no luck with them. I've never tried. We used to breed lovebirds um, when I was a kid. Or my parents bred them, not me. I hand fed them. But um, not parrotlets. We've not tried them. I don't know how difficult they are. We were just lucky because when I called the breeder, I was looking because she also breeds parakeets or budgies. And I'd rather go to her than like Petco because with Petco, I know because I used to work at Petco, they're sick so often. Um, you might be fine, you might not. And I didn't want to bring, being that I already have chicken and the, he needs to go in the same room with chicken, I didn't want to bring another bird from, like something from Petco that could be ill in and possibly get chicken sick. So I called, um, plus the breeder is really good with her birds. Like chicken is such the perfect, like she, he was raised really well. So um, I contacted her and she was like, it's funny you called I just like I have two babies they just are weaned I the one the brother is already found or going to a home from somebody who has another one and um so she started because I said I, I basically was just looking for a small bird I wasn't too picky on the type I just don't want chicken alone in the room yes I'm buying pets for my pets but um yeah it wasn't something I was considering when I looked into I was just 
wanted a little one for our chicken to be able to talk to during the day. Cram said, get a pet chicken. I have a pet house, fancy chicken. I have a pet house, fancy chicken named Pomroy. They actually make, 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 yeah, I know people who have chickens as pets there. I love them. They're too big for my space. So they don't really fit in. Um, they wouldn't get enough, like, there's not really anywhere for them to wander in here. So that's, they were definitely bigger than what I was looking for. But I love chickens, like real chickens. Sass says, we bought a house and bear band parakeet, a bear band parakeet with, came with it. He was so lonely, we ended up getting a girl for him and love birds. Lots of baby birds. Um, Toby said, I'm not sure if you've answered this or not, but how do you get inspiration for starting new artwork? Sometimes I find it hard to get ideas to draw or paint. Well, okay, so for, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think we all go through that. For me, I'm, I have to get a new painting done for um, videos all the time. So I don't have time to sit around going, oh, I'm not finding something that I'm like inspired by or motivated by. I have to go pick something really quick. I mean, I'll give myself one evening or one night to come up with something. And if I don't come up with anything, I'll paint some cherries. I mean, it can be anything. I just have to get started. But here's the thing. So let's say I decided to paint some cherries. Those may seem boring to you. That may not seem like the super most exciting thing in the world. But that painting of cherries, actually, we're going to be wrapping up so I can put my paintbrushes down for now. That painting of cherries that you did just to do something, just to get yourself painting, not only did you now get practice blending, shading, you're getting good practice, you got a piece of artwork finished, those cherries may lead you to a bigger, better idea. You might start thinking, what about a snake in the bowl with the cherries or a lizard or a frog sitting on them while you're working on them? As simple as that idea seemed, it may be the thing that leads you to a way better idea or something that you're more excited about. So don't spend too much time. And I've seen students do this when they would come in because I let students choose what they wanted to paint in my classes. And I would have them come in or occasionally and they'd waste an entire two hour class looking through my reference photos trying to pick something. And you have to get to the point and tell them, it's like, just pick something or I'll pick it for you. We have to get you started on something because you're you're wasting time. Pick something. This isn't the only painting. And I think that's the thing you have to have in your head. We, it's almost like when we paint, we pick something, we act like this is the only thing I'm ever going to paint again. It has to, it's so important. I have to make sure it's perfect. No, it's not. You're going to paint hopefully hundreds or thousands of paintings or drawings. Pick something, get started on it. Don't sit around waiting for that idea to hit you because the longer in, you go in between paintings or in between projects, the worse it's going to get. You're going to get less ideas. Your brain starts to just not functioning art-wise and it doesn't think art-wise. But while you're working on the cherries, you're now in the art mode. Your brain is, actually, let me turn these off. Your brain is now thinking about art, thinking about the future project. You're keeping in that game, basically. So no matter what it is, when you are, or for me too, I'll paint cherries sometimes, even though I'm not like super excited. That doesn't seem like a great, amazing, most original idea. But that may lead to something else. And if nothing else, I had some more practice. So that's that's what I look, look for that way. Um, Grub asked, what size palette do I have? Um, Hold on one second. I will tell you. Actually, I can't look on that. Where's my phone? Let's see what size I ordered. I think I can look on new way. Uh, nope. Who did I order it from? Okay, let's do it this way. I don't remember off the top of my, actually, you know what would be faster? Let me grab a measuring tape, tape measure. I always lose my um, normal tape measure. So I have to, uh, but for some reason I can always keep track of my sewing one. Um, this one is, it looks like about 16 by 12 and a half, 12, 16 by 12, 12 by six, 12 by 16. There's how you say it. Um, 12 by 16 is the size of mine. And that one fits perfectly in the Masterson's brush, like, or the, the palette holder. Make sure when you order yours too, grab yourself a glass scraper, the little, um, thing. This is what you're going to clean it with. So you're definitely going to want one of these too. And it doesn't, I don't know that it matters what kind you get. They have black ones, which I think are more attractive than this. But I knew I would have a hard time tracking down the black one when I, because it would match everything in here. So I got a big, ugly yellow one. So when I look for it, it's really easy to find. 
And as ugly as it was, it was a good choice. Oh, Valerie said I have the Amazon link in the description, so that should show you the price. It should or the size. It should take you directly to the one I have. Fixed by Lisa, have you? However, did you complete so many videos per week? I uploaded four videos in five days for regular and special events, and yikes, it was crazy. Of course, uploading sometimes takes seventeen hours. Yeah, um. My schedule was timed like down to like 15 minute increments. I did not have any free time at all, like at all. It was, it was a real problem. And even right now I'm behind on stuff still, so unfortunately. My Thursday night where I normally would hang, wanna hang out with a friend, I can't because I'm behind on work right now. But normally now I can do that where for, I mean for gosh, years I couldn't. I couldn't go hang out with a friend. There was no time for that. So doing the, that amount of videos, it was, too much. I don't regret it though because I'm proud of what I completed at the same time. But it it definitely got to a point where it was too much. So the health problems that I had last year and all the surgeries actually I think were a good thing for me because now I have time to focus on making the videos I do make, making them better. And I think that that's more important than uploading nonstop. I think that maybe before it was a good thing with the way YouTube was to upload constantly. Maybe that is part of what, what made me grow to where I was. But I think that now it's more, there's more value in putting more time into the individual videos that you do make and making them really, really good and doing like one or two a week instead of five a week. I don't plan to go back to doing that many. That was pretty crazy. Um, way too much. Um, Daria Nichols said, sorry for asking again, but who's your favorite artist? You know, right now, it, it changes constantly. I don't have a one favorite artist, but right now I am, let me put the lid on this and I'll see if I can show you. I got a painting from um, Chris Austin, I believe his name is. Hold on. It's a gouache study. I need to get this framed. But I got this, I ordered it from him, and right now he's my favorite because I'm so excited to have this. So let's see if I can, I don't want it to touch the oil paint. Can you see that? He painted the Raven. This is a gouache study. So yeah, Chris, uh, what did he call it? Is he using Christopher Austin? Yeah, Christopher Austin is what he signed in his work. Oh, it says right there a bit too. But he's, this is, he's my favorite right now. Um, I actually bought this. This is for my birthday from my husband that I bought. So maybe I should make him frame it. So that's the thing he'll do. But this guy, you can follow him on Instagram. And, oh, I love this right now so much. I love that. Well, maybe because I don't need to put that there. Um, I need to put this somewhere where it won't get messed up. Uh, where is a safe place for this? So, yeah, right now I would say he's one of my favorites. I don't have a single favorite. He's definitely one of my, my favorites. Um, huge fan of... Um, Brian Holland, his work is amazing. And if you look at his work, you'll actually see where some of mine really easily is influenced by his, his stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I have so many favorites that it would be hard for me to just list one. Let's see. Okay, we are at 10.09. I think I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go say hi to chicken. Since he's all my chicken now, I feel more um, obligated to spend time. Matt's still spending time with him. But I'm probably going to go say hi to him. And, uh, oh, gosh, I am so bad about not announcing it. My uh, moderators for today were Joseph Fincham, the art of Joseph Fincham, and Valerie for with Drawing with Fire. She does wood burning hence the name. Make sure to check out their channels. Actually, Valerie just did a live stream I saw the other day that was pretty cool. Make sure to check out their channels, channels, subscribe to them as a huge, well, because they produce cool content too, but also say thank you to them for, I need their help and they help me so much. So um, thank you guys for helping so, so much. Their links are in the video description and I'm a jerk and need to remember to announce that as like a huge thank you before I get started. Um, let's see, Jesse asked if that is a frame painting behind me. It is. It's in a plastic bag. That one is Sandman, the one with the turtle, the surreal one. It's getting dropped off at the Frisco City Hall on Friday for the Art in the Atrium display. That one and my my sea otter is getting dropped off. Neil Patel Art said, thanks for the advice and tips. I really appreciate your artwork is very inspirational. Thank you. I enjoyed the live stream and hopefully can make it to more in the future. Yay, thanks for joining. Thank you everyone for joining and Tall, putting up with me not being able to pronounce anything or say anything right because I'd say it's one of those nights but 
That seems to always be the case when I do live streams. It's so bad. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> Valerie and Joseph are arguing over whether it's them who is my favorite artist. You know, you guys are all some of my favorite artists. But um, <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, obviously, you're my favorite. That's why you're helping me moderate. Because your art's amazing. Yes? Does, does that work? Um, it's weird. Do you guys do this? Like, I have friends who are artists who were my favorite, favorite artists, and then you end up being friends with them, and you, for some reason you stop listing them. I do that. Like, Jason Morgan. I always listed Jason Morgan as one of my favorite artists, and now we're friends, and for some reason, he's still... Like, I'm a huge fan. He's still one of my favorites. But for some reason, when I list out favorites, I don't think of listing him. Aliona Nicholson. Do the same thing with her. Like, I would list her before as one of my favorites, and now we're friends, and I don't think to list her, even though she's still one of my favorites. It's weird. It's like when I list out favorite artists, I always, in my brain, is like, I have to list somebody I don't personally know. My brain is funny. Um, Daria says, thanks for the answer. Wish you the best from Mexico. I love Mexico. Um, let's see see one more yeah so we'll go ahead and wrap up thank you guys so much for joining and i have no idea what next week is but it'll be again same time 8 p.m central time um it won't be this i'm one way or another if it means no sleep it means no sleep i'm finishing this tomorrow so i've got to do that and get some i need to get the lionfish video up i'm hoping to have that uploaded for you guys the lionfish watercolor the derwent review hopefully will be up on friday at the very latest saturday and on sunday i'm hoping to have the digital tablet review up so this weekend, I should have a couple of videos for you, but thanks again for joining, and I will see you guys. Oh, quick reminder, if you have not already, make sure to sign up for my email newsletter because YouTube is not notifying people hardly at all when thing, when videos do go live. So once a week, I, I only send it out normally once a week. I update you guys with whatever videos were new, live streams that are coming, that sort of thing. So make sure you are signed up for that newsletter, and if you hate it, you can unsubscribe easily. I don't like store your information because... Turns out I'm not a stalker, but um, make sure you do that. I should have a link below in the video description. I'll see you guys next week.